What's up guys? It's yo boy Omni Sensei back with a new Naruto What If series. What if Naruto had a leveling up system? Naruto X Harem. Part 2. If you enjoy my content, consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video, share, and leave a comment. This really helps with the algorithm. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. Also, I have set up a Patreon account, consider joining to support the channel, and for more exclusive content. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. The week has passed good. Good. Keep it up, Naruto guy shouted at Naruto, who was sparring with the Jonin. Naruto also wore a pair of ankle weights with the kanji, meaning guts written on them. Naruto also had a pair of prayer beads around his wrists. Each weighed 50 kilograms, limiting Naruto's movement severely. But this is also a great training method to greatly increase Naruto's speed. I was also teaching Naruto the strong fist fighting style. Strong fist is Guy's and his student Lee's characteristic fighting style, the purpose of which is to cause external damage and break bones. This style of fighting involves smashing your opponent, and is generally used only by extremely physically powerful and dominating shinobi. The user must be exceptionally conditioned, or even a brief performance in this style will quickly exhaust and strain the body. Guy was also teaching Naruto that Tejutsu was the art of fighting with your body and not with forms, which was pretty ironic considering what Guy is currently teaching Naruto. Many forms of Tejutsu combat have weaknesses and each weakness as glaring as its stances. Knowing how, where and when to throw a punch was good enough. Punches and kicks were only as good as the practitioner, and even a practitioner fails when he fights with his own style against something unfamiliar. True Tejutsu skill required a strict amount of discipline and actual years of combat training. Yes. That's it Naruto I could see the flames of youth brimming all around you. Your limits are shattering right now, Guy shouted as he slapped away Naruto's roundhouse kick. This is getting good Naruto shouted as he got fired up from Guy's motivating words. Sparring and physical exercises were all what he was doing with Guy. But he was also working on something else with the Jonin sensei. The body flicker jutsu, he was getting closer and closer to be able to constantly use it in battle. He just needed to get used to the feeling when he used the jutsu. Naruto performed the tiger seal and vitalized his body with his immense amounts of chakra. He used the body flicker jutsu and disappeared in a blur. I widened his eyes as it looked like Naruto just straight up disappeared into thin air when he used the body flicker jutsu. Bam. Guy staggered forward as he was kicked in the back by Naruto. He turned around with a surprised expression on his face. That's when Guy had a realization. Due to how much chakra Naruto has, his body was vitalized to the extreme when he used the body flicker jutsu. That is why Naruto can disappear and reappear so quickly. Skill created. Body flicker jutsu. Level 1 it is accomplished by using chakra to temporarily vitalize the body and move at extreme speeds. The amount of chakra required depends on the overall distance and elevation between the user and the intended destination. A puff of smoke is occasionally used to disguise the user's movements. Reduce chakra use by 1% when using the jutsu. When the skill maxes out, you are able to use this skill with a one-handed half-tiger seal without draining extra chakra, that was amazing, Naruto let's continue, you got it, bushy brows sensei, and that's how I was now able to use the body flicker jutsu in a fight. Naruto explained to Shikamaru who just yawned in response. Where did you even get the jutsu? Shikamaru asked him. Naruto held up the scroll that contained information about the body flicker jutsu. Gramps gave it to me. Naruto replied. Shikamaru and Choji who was listening to them silently understood who Naruto was talking about. I still can't believe that you can call the Hokage by that. Choji commented. Naruto was about to reply, but a kunai was suddenly thrown at him. The kunai stuck onto the table in front of the trio. Naruto noticed a paper being tied to the kunai with a string. He tore the string off and read what was written on the paper. Meet me behind the academy after school Ichiha Satsuki Naruto looked up at where Satsuki was sitting. She was staring at the blackboard like nothing had happened. Naruto sighed and crumpled up the piece of paper, keeping the kunai Satsuki through for himself. After school, Naruto said goodbye to Shikamaru and Choji before heading to the back of the academy building. 
There he found Satsuki leaning against the wall of the building while looking at the ground. Naruto approached her with his hands in his pocket. Satsuki noticed him and narrowed her black eyes at him. You're late. She commented. Naruto shrugged before standing in front of her. You didn't say what time I had to meet you in that note of yours. Naruto replied while grinning cheekily at Satsuki, annoying her with that bright smile of his. Cut to the chase Satsuki, I have a tutoring session with Sakura-chan soon. I can't keep her waiting in my own home. Naruto demanded. I don't intend to stall you anyways. I I want to train with you. Satsuki requested with a small blush on her face. She was embarrassed because she was asking someone for help. Naruto froze in shock after hearing her request. Earth to lose her. Are you even listening to me? Satsuki asked while snapping her fingers in front of Naruto's blue eyes. Naruto snapped out of it before rubbing his eyes. He narrowed his eyes at her as he reached his right hand into his shuriken holster. You're a fake aren't you? Wh what? The Satsuki I know wouldn't ask to train together, especially mine. You hate me, why ask for us to train together when you can train on your own just fine? Naruto asked seriously. Satsuki gritted her teeth. Look, you've been making a lot of progress in the last week. You have been putting up a better fight against me recently when we had those sparring sessions in the academy. Satsuki commented. How do you do it, Naruto? I want to know. Satsuki demanded while narrowing her cold eyes at him. Naruto began to answer Satsuki more now. Those she perceives to be weaker than herself she arrogantly disregards, giving them little attention so that they won't hold her back, those she perceives as stronger she fixates over and tries to surpass. Right now she was fixating over him, wanting to know his secret to getting stronger. Naruto's method was simple. Oh that. It's pretty simple really, do the fucking hard work until you drop, the results will come eventually. You satisfied now, Satsuki. Naruto asked her before turning around and walking away from her, leaving behind a stunned Satsuki. Who's really the idiot here? Did you really think there was a shortcut to these things? I see that you've been making good progress, Naruto. Hiruzen commented with W smile on his face. Naruto smiled back. I'm not gonna stop there. Believe it he replied seriously. Hiruzen nodded, glad that Naruto was finally taking it seriously. I see that you have weights on you. Hiruzen commented while looking at the ankle weights Naruto was wearing. He looked back at Naruto. They aren't really good for you when you're in a real-life battle situation. The enemy won't be waiting for you to take all of those off just so you could fight them at full power. They want you dead as soon as possible. Hiruzen advised. Naruto tilted his head. So what should I do, Gramps? Naruto asked him, confused about what solution he should be using. Hiruzen smiled and reached into his drawer. Have you heard about Fuinjutsu, Naruto? Hiruzen asked Naruto while he took out a small book. No I haven't. What is that? Naruto asked curiously. Fuinjutsu are a type of jutsu that seal objects, living beings, chakra, along with a wide variety of other things within another object. Fuinjutsu can also be used to restrict movement or unseal objects, either from within something or someone. Hiruzen explained. Okay. But how is that gonna help me? Naruto asked him, still confused about where Hiruzen was going with this. You can create seals that can add weight onto you like those weights you're wearing. I'm not joking when I say that you can do anything with Fuinjutsu. You can even array certain memories with it. I want you to learn Fuinjutsu, Naruto. That is what your mother would have wanted. Hiruzen revealed seriously, shocking Naruto to the core. Wh what Naruto stood up from his chair and looked at Hiruzen with an expression of disbelief. This was the first time Hiruzen had ever mentioned information about his parents. Are you serious? Naruto asked his surrogate grandfather who nodded back at him. Yes, you did not take your surname, Yuzumaki, from your father, but from your mother. Your mother's name is Yuzumaki Kashina. A Fuinjutsu master, one of the most powerful S-rank ninja in the whole world, and is nicknamed the Red Hot Habanero. Hiruzen revealed with a hint of proudness in his voice, while having a small smile on his face. Wow Naruto was in awe. But he was confused about something. Hey Gramps, why is being a Fuinjutsu master a title? Naruto asked him. A Fuinjutsu master is a title given to only a few shinobi in this world. 
Those who have that title are the second Hokage Tabarama Senju, the fourth Hokage Minato Namakas, one of the legendary San and Jiraiya, me, and lastly your mother, who is the most powerful Fuenjutsu master, out of the ones I just listed. This is to be expected. After all, she is a part of the Yuzumaki clan, who are known for their godlike prowess in Fuenjutsu. Hmm interesting. Wait I have a clan, do I seriously have a clan Gramps Naruto asked Hiruzen who nodded back. Yes, you and your mother are related to the Yuzumaki clan, a prominent clan in Yuzushi Agakur. Hiruzen replied seriously. Naruto sat back down still donning a shocked expression. So that means that means I have a family you you bastard you lied to me. Naruto shouted angrily at Hiruzen who wasn't phased by his outburst. Instead Hiruzen had a grim expression on his face. Naruto, I'm very sorry to say this. But the Yuzumaki clan has been destroyed by four of the five great nations. The survivors of Yuzushio's destruction went into hiding and scattered across the globe to seek refuge. Hiruzen explained, shocking Naruto once more. D. Destroyed why? Naruto asked the old Hokage. Hiruzen sat up straight and blew out smoke from his pipe. The Yuzumaki clan's godlike skill with Yuenjutsu earned them both respect and fear throughout the ninja world. Most believed that the village was too powerful to be allowed to continue. And so they targeted and destroyed it. Who did that? The nations who invaded and destroyed it were Kumagakur, Iwagakur, Kurigakur, Sunagakur and other small shinobi nations who allied themselves with them. Why didn't you get involved? Because we were allies. Yuzashio's Yuzumaki clan and Kanoha's Senju clan were distant blood relatives. This was also what started the Second Great Ninja War, but most people believed that economic disparity between the countries was what started it. Did you even try to help them? Naruto asked him while clenching his fists tightly. Hiruzen looked away. I didn't even know that it was happening at that time. The invaders knew that they would fail with Kanoha's help, so they targeted all of Kanoha's shinobi and Yuzashio first before starting the invasion. By the time I received word of it, the destruction was already done. When we got there, all we found were dead bodies. Hiruzen whispered, but Naruto could hear him loud and clear. The destruction was for nothing as the invaders didn't find one single thing about the clan's Fuenjutsu. I've seen what the Yuzumaki can do firsthand with Fuenjutsu, hiding the information about their Fuenjutsu somewhere was a smart thing they did. Hiruzen added. But why would you lie to me? You said that you didn't know anything about my family. Why Gramps, why? Naruto asked the question that has been bothering him from the start. The hunt for the remnants of the Yuzumaki clan members is still ongoing till this day. Even though you may be the last living member of the clan, they will not stop their hunt, so that they could eradicate the devils trying to play god from this world. Hiruzen quickly replied. But my name literally has Yuzumaki in it. Are you trying to kill me? Naruto asked while glaring at Hiruzen. Hiruzen chuckled before shaking his head. No, and I would never so that. Members of the clan are renowned for having bright red hair, possessing incredibly strong life forces and chakra. The people of Yuzushi Agakur were noted to have notoriously long lives, so it gained the epithet, the village of longevity. Hiruzen explained. So I'm actually hiding in plain sight. Naruto wanted to confirm by asking him. Hiruzen nodded, confirming it. This is a lot Naruto whispered while rubbing his face. Hiruzen slid a book at Naruto's direction. Naruto grabbed and looked at it. Fuenjutsu for Beginners by Jiraiya. Volume 1 was the title of the book. Naruto looked at Hiruzen for more information. This book will be introducing you to Fuenjutsu. It contains the basic of basics, seal recognition, the foundational languages of seals for the first part, culminating in the storage seal. It also has guides on calligraphy. Hiruzen then handed Naruto a calligraphy set. Before you start crafting seals, you must first have perfect handwriting, as one wrong brush stroke could potentially make the seal explode in your face, effectively killing you. Hiruzen explained seriously, sending chills down Naruto's spine. Here are some more guides on calligraphy. I've failed you many times Naruto, but not this time. Hiruzen vowed while looking into the blonde's bright blue eyes. Me and Jiraiya owe you at least your heritage. Half of it should suffice for now. The other half I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Hiruzen mused. He also handed Naruto another scroll. Your next two deliveries are contained in this scroll. The payment is 20,000 Ryo. Hiruzen explained as Naruto gladly took it from the Hokage's hands. Before you go, take this. 
few Injutsu users had levels to tell theirs and others' skill. This is the Izushi Agakur scale to measure themselves. Hiruzen stated as Naruto grabbed it and put it into his pocket. Naruto smiled at his surrogate grandfather. Thanks Gramps. I'll see you soon. The next time you see me, I'll be an expert at Fuinjutsu. Believe it, Naruto declared before running out of the Hokage's office. Here is inside, it was finally over. The guilt washing over him made the stoic Hokage want to cry and beg for Naruto's forgiveness. Here is in hope that this would be the start of his redemption arc. At Naruto's dump house perk gained. Huh. Naruto hummed and looked at the floating screen in front of him. He had said his things that he received from Hiruzen down on the dining table. Mother's name. All levels that have skills related to Fuinjutsu increase faster by 40% Naruto smiled warmly. The word mother meant a lot more to him now. Now knowing who she was, he vowed silently that he would make her proud and to not make her sacrifice to let him live be in vain. I don't think just becoming Hokage is enough for someone like me. From now on, I, Naruto will surpass all of the Hokages. Believe it Naruto grinned broadly to himself and took out the paper Hiruzen gave him. The paper contained the Izushi Agakur scale to measure themselves in Fuinjutsu. The first level was novice, and this level applied to most of the shinobi forces. It ranged from no knowledge to barely any. Then there were beginner, intermediate, advanced and finally master. All these levels had a number scale within them from 1 to 9. For example you could be an advanced level 8 or a beginner level 9. Even master had a scale from 1 to 10. There were no living level 10 masters in the world according to this paper. Even Minato was nowhere near being a level 10 master. To gain that level you had to create a whole new facet of Fuinjutsu like inventing summoning or even inventing Fuinjutsu itself. According to the paper, there have only been 5 recorded level 10 masters in history, and 4 of them were Yuzumakis, his mother included. Apparently, people who had the potential to be Fuinjutsu masters were one in a thousand. Being a genius isn't enough to master Fuinjutsu. But Naruto wasn't deterred by the statistics, he would not let numbers hold him back from being the greatest. Naruto then started reading the first volume of the Fuinjutsu book Hiruzen gave him. Fuinjutsu requires a lot of things. It requires a whole slew of sub-skills like code generation and breaking, advanced formulas and concepts, a simultaneous abstract and exact understanding of the world, and how forces interact just to name a few. Naruto knew he was stepping into a whole new world with Fuinjutsu. It excited him, it was shockingly more exciting than eating ramen or learning a new super awesome jutsu. Naruto quickly became obsessed with the subject of Fuinjutsu. But he knew that he needed to have perfect calligraphy handwriting first, before he could even start on the basic seals. Naruto looked at his calligraphy set and grinned broadly. He cracked his knuckles and stretched for a few seconds. Alright. Let's get started what time is it? Naruto asked as he looked out of the window. It was night time. Naruto had been obsessing over improving the calligraphy skill that he had ignored eating dinner. Calligraphy. Level 10 The art of producing decorative handwriting or lettering with a pen or brush. Writing speed increased by 20%. When the skill maxes out, you gained the perk perfect writing. Wow it's 10pm already. I'm too obsessed with this. Naruto chuckled as he prepared to go to bed. After taking a quick shower and tidying up his house, Naruto laid on his small bed. He still can't believe that he had a clan that was outside of the village. He still has in process learning things about his mother, Kashina. But there was still one question lingering in his head before his eyes closed. Who the hell was his father? Bye Naruto. See you tomorrow Sakura waved at Naruto who cheerfully waved back. See you Sakura-chan Naruto shouted as Sakura slowly walked away to her house. After their first tutoring session, Sakura has been training together with Naruto every day. It was exhausting for her as she had never done any intense physical activities in her life. But Sakura grit through it. If she wanted to be a Kanoichi, she needed to ignore the soreness and pain in her body, as it is just weakness leaving her body. Sakura had her own training program instead of using Naruto's. She also started studying about what kind of ninjutsu a person like her could use. Sakura had low chakra reserves. From other people's point of view, it would seem like a disadvantage, but it was an enormous blessing in disguise. She could proudly say that her most defining skill was her proficiency in chakra control. Such exact use of her chakra allows her to perform a jutsu with maximum efficiency without wasting much chakra. 
With some advice from Aruka sensei she decided to start learning basic Jinjutsu, since her aptitude is well suited for it. With Aruka's guidance, Sakura also showed interest in medical ninjutsu. It is a branch of ninjutsu associated with healing, as well as the manipulation of their own or another's body, practiced by shinobi categorized as medical nin. The use of medical ninjutsu requires very advanced chakra control, as well as extensive knowledge on such things as herbs, medicines, the human body and even poisons. The knowledge of medical ninjutsu can be used for a variety of purposes, apart from simply healing. It can be used to create poisonous gas, deranging the target's nervous system, or directly attacking a target with chakra scalpels. Tsunade Senju, renowned as the greatest medical nin in the world, was able to apply the extreme chakra control required for medical ninjutsu to create chakra-enhanced strength. Naruto was about to continue training when he heard someone approaching him. He turned around and saw Satsuki walking towards him. What do you want, Satsuki? Naruto asked her, annoyed that she interrupted him at the perfect time. Let's bar, no holds barred. Naruto and Satsuki were each standing on a tall tree far away from each other. They were staring at each other's unique eyes while donning a serious expression. Naruto had agreed to sparring with Satsuki no holds barred. But they silently agreed that they would not go for the killing blow. Satsuki flicked a small pebble high up to the air. The pebble flew up and fell onto the ground. The second it landed onto the grassy ground, that's when the fight started. Naruto and Satsuki jumped off the respective trees they were on and started dashing towards each other. They leaped towards each other and held their right and left arms up. Bam! Their hands clashed with each other. They narrowed their eyes at each other before landing on the ground. A Tejutsu fight ensued. Both fighters were fighting evenly with each other. Each fighter has their own advantages. Naruto had the power, stamina, vitality and unpredictability, while Satsuki's most consistent physical display is her speed, reflexes and her skill in Tejutsu. Satsuki attempted to perform a spinning roundhouse kick to Naruto's head. Naruto reacted fast enough to raise his hand, blocking the kick. Naruto took a couple steps back from the powerful kick. Satsuki who had her shuriken holster open, threw several kunai and shuriken at him. All of them missed him. Naruto smirked at her. What kind of aim is that? Naruto taunted her. Satsuki smirked back at him. Look behind you, idiot. Satsuki replied while raising her hands. Naruto widened his eyes as he saw wire wrapped around her fingers. Satsuki had wrapped the kunai and shuriken she threw with the wire. Satsuki did a pulling motion, sending the flying weapons back at Naruto, who quickly weaved through a couple of hand seals which were tiger, boar, ox, dog, snake. He got through them so rapidly even Satsuki didn't see him do it. Hand Seals. Level 13 Hand Seals speed increased by 26% Naruto performed the substitution jutsu, replacing himself with a block of wood. The kunai and shuriken struck the block of wood. Substitution Jutsu. Level 5 The instant before they are to be struck by an attack, the user replaces themselves with a block of wood or something similar. Because the attack does hit something, opponents may briefly believe that they've successfully struck the user. But this is merely an optical illusion, and opponents will quickly notice what's happened. If users are fast enough, they can use this brief lapse in the opponent's attentions to stage a counter-attack. Uses 5% less chakra when using the jutsu. When the jutsu maxes out, you are able to use this jutsu without using hand seals. Satsuki widened her eyes and quickly got on guard, holding up two kunais in a reverse grip. She looked around, finding no sign of her opponent. Where the hell is he? Satsuki muttered angrily. Naruto appeared right behind her using the body flicker jutsu. Satsuki widened her eyes and turned around to face him, but it was too late. Bong. Satsuki grunted as she was punched in the face. She staggered back as Naruto continued his combo. He punched Satsuki in the face again before delivering a roundhouse kick to the side of her head. Arg Satsuki grunted as she was sent tumbling down on the ground. She spat out saliva before quickly standing up. She started weaving through hand seals which were snake, ram, monkey, boar, horse and lastly tiger, while kneading chakra in her body before turning it into fire. Fire style. Fireball Jutsu Satsuki declared before expelling the fire from her mouth. She spat out a giant orb of orange flames that maintained its shape while it was charging straight towards Naruto. 
Naruto widened his eyes as he stared at the fireball inching closer and closer to him. The fireball then exploded. Boom. Upon impact, the fireball is powerful enough to crater the ground and vaporize the surroundings. The fireball jutsu was created by the Ichiha clan, and over time became one of their signature abilities. The Ichiha in fact used the jutsu as a coming-of-age rite, with members not being considered true adults until they learned to perform it. Satsuki remained on guard as the smoke cleared, revealing nothing lying in the crater the fireball created. Suddenly, Naruto appeared in front of her via the body flicker jutsu. Bam boom pow bong bayam. Satsuki's lips cracked open when she received the punch in the face from Naruto's five-punch combo to Satsuki's body. Naruto delivered a Spartan kick to Satsuki's solar plexus, making her gasp and sending her flying back. She tumbled on the ground and laid there, not moving an inch. By the way, Naruto had taken off the weights on his body. If he still had them on, it would be a completely different story with Satsuki dominating the fight without question. Satsuki laid on the ground in the spread eagle position, while having an expression of disbelief on her face. She was frustrated at how weak she was. She trained so hard just for her to be defeated by the dead last of the academy. She clenched her fists tightly, drawing blood from how hard she was clenching it. She remembered something her brother Itachi said then and there. There is no value in killing the likes of you my foolish sister, if you want to kill me curse me. Hate me. And live a long and unsightly life run away or run away and cling to your pitiful life. And then some day, when you have the same eyes as I do, come before me. Damn you Naruto Satsuki yelled before performing a kip up. Naruto widened his eyes as he stared into Satsuki's eyes. Her eyes had changed. Naruto recognized those eyes thanks to Sakura telling them about it in one of his tutoring sessions with her. He knew a lot about it now. Satsuki had just unlocked the Sharingan, the Dejutsu Keke Genkai of the Ichiha clan that appears selectively among its members. It is regarded as one of the three great Dejutsu, the others being the Byakugan and the Rinnegan. When a wielder of this Keke Genkai experiences a powerful emotional or stressful condition, with regards to a person precious to THEM hatred, love etc., their brain releases a special form of chakra that affects the optic nerves, transforming the eyes into Sharingan. For that reason, the Sharingan is described as an eye that reflects the heart. The emotion can also be positive, driven by a desire to protect or reunite with a loved one. When first awakened, each Sharingan usually will have only one Tamo, although in some case, they immediately gain two Tamo in each of their eyes. Through emotional growth of extreme conditions, the Sharingan will continue to develop, its full maturation represented by a third Tamo. Satsuki currently has one Tamo in each of her Sharingan. She entered a fighting stance with Naruto doing the same. Naruto suddenly performed a hand seal and vitalized his body with his chakra. Satsuki smirked and did the same hand seal that Naruto did and vitalized her own body with her chakra. Both fighters disappeared in a blur and appeared in front of each other with their fists raised. They shot their clenched fists towards each other. Bomb. Both Naruto and Satsuki grunted as they punched each other at the same time. They fell onto the ground. How? She wasn't able to do that before. Naruto thought to himself before quickly standing up with Satsuki following his lead. The Sharingan grants the wielder two broad abilities. The Eye of Insight and the Eye of Hypnotism. The Eye of Insight allows Satsuki to see chakra, giving it color in order to distinguish it by its composition and source. Though, not as capable in this regard as the Byakugan, it can see chakra through some, but not all, obstructions, and detect irregularities in a person's chakra flow, such as those caused by Jinjutsu influence. She is granted incredible clarity of perception, enabling them to read lips or mimic something like pencil movements. In combat, this allows her to see fast-moving objects and, once fully developed, offers some amount of predictive capabilities. She can anticipate an opponent's next move based on the slightest muscle tension in their body, and act accordingly to dodge or intercept. She can also read the enemy's hand seals to give them an insight of the perform technique's nature, regardless of the speed of performance, so long as the hands are not physically hidden from view. That's not the end of it, Satsuki is also able to copy almost any jutsu she sees, memorizing ninjutsu, jinjutsu, and tijutsu with near-perfect accuracy. She can then either perform that jutsu or modify it to suit her needs. 
Again, Sharingan users need the prerequisite abilities before they can mimic a jutsu they have seen, and for that reason they cannot, for example, reproduce Keke Genkai abilities they do not have, or nature transformations they haven't learned to perform. Naruto wiped his mouth before grinned broadly at Satsuki who arrogantly smirked back at him. You may have copied my jutsu Satsuki. But in this world, experience matters. That goes the same for ninjutsu. Naruto stated seriously. If someone like you can't use it smartly then what's the point in learning it in the first place? Satsuki replied got serious and entered a tojutsu stance. Naruto snorted and cracked his knuckles. I have never won against you, Satsuki. But today you shall know what losing means. Bring it, Naruto. Satsuki laid on the ground breathless and defeated. She had lost to Naruto. She had lost because of her low chakra reserves for using the body flicker jutsu and the Sharingan constantly. She also had some complications when she unlocked the Sharingan. Her enhanced perception threw off her timing, causing her to overstress her body from trying to keep up with the increased reaction time, forcing her to adjust in real time to properly move with it. A higher control of her chakra is also required to maintain its power for long. Surprisingly, Satsuki didn't feel any anger from losing to the dead last of her class. It was probably overshadowed by how happy she was on the inside for finally unlocking the Sharingan after years of constantly trying to. Satsuki looked at Naruto who stretched out his hand at her. No hard feelings. Naruto asked hopefully with a nervous smile on his face. Satsuki sighed and grabbed his hand, letting her be pulled up by him. Naruto grinned at her. Hey, I have a great idea. Stupid, but it would be great if it worked out. From now on, let's train together every day. What do you say? Naruto suggested. Satsuki was taken aback by his suggestion. They beat the shit out of each other a few minutes ago, and now he's trying to be friends with each other. Satsuki thought she probably hit him too hard. What do I gain from this? Satsuki asked while crossing her arms. Satsuki was a recluse, she kept contact with people to an absolute minimum, and maintained her strong sense of pride in the process. Are you seriously asking that, Dumbus? We're gonna get stronger together obviously. And maybe I could get that stick out of your ass. Naruto replied confidently. Satsuki rolled her eyes, she did not have a stick in her ass, no matter how much Naruto told her she had it. And this sounded like a very bad idea to her. They absolutely hated each other. Maybe they had something that they liked about each other, but that was a long shot of the century. But despite all of the cons Satsuki pointed out in her mind, the pros outweighed it dramatically. Not only would she get stronger, she would be measuring her strength with Naruto, who is the only person in the academy minus the instructors, to be able to fight her evenly. Satsuki decided to go for it. Alright fine. But know that I'm only accepting this so that I can get stronger. And you would probably be annoying and keep nagging me about it. Satsuki replied to him. Naruto grinned broadly at her answered. Hurry he cheered loudly and jumped around excitedly. Satsuki groaned and palmed her face. What have I gotten myself into? A month later hello Naruto. Tenten greeted the blonde happily. Hey Tenten. Naruto greeted her back as he approached her. Can I get 50 sets of shuriken and kunai? Sure. Anything else you wanna buy? There is. Here's a list. Naruto handed Tenten a list of what he wanted to buy from her shop. Tenten hummed as she read it. Empty scrolls, ink bottles and brushes, explosive tags, smoke bombs. Tenten whispered. I also want to get a new outfit. Naruto quickly added. Tenten nodded and smiled at him. You got it Naruto you'll walk away being even more handsome than before. Not that you're not right now by the way. Cute is the perfect way to describe you. Tenten teased, making Naruto blush at her compliment. Um Tenten can I get the things I want now please. Ha 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 she's right, I really do look handsome. Naruto commented. He was staring at his reflection in the mirror while in the dressing room of Tenten's weapons store. The new outfit he was wearing made Naruto look more serious and more shinobi-like. You done Naruto? Tenten asked him. Naruto exited the dressing room. I'll take it. How much will it be? Naruto asked. 15,000 Ryo. Tenten replied instantly. Naruto was surprised. Wow, that's cheaper than I expected. Naruto commented, confusing Tenten. Why is that? The price is considered average. Tenten replied. Naruto sighed and shrugged. 
I don't know, the other weapons store would charge triple or even quadruple that amount for no reason. Naruto revealed, shocking her. Why would they do that? Tenten asked, feeling angered about this revelation. Naruto shook his head. I don't know Tenten, these villagers have a grudge on me. I don't even know why they do. Naruto replied. Tenten shook her head. Ignore them, Naruto. They don't know the true you. Naruto smiled, hearing Tenten's kind words. Thank you Tenten. I should get going now though. We should seriously train together sometime. Tenten smirked at him. I still think that training is you trying to ask me out though. Tenten accused, making Naruto blush and cross his arms. Well what if I did ask you out? Naruto shouted. Tenten leaned into his ear. Well then you better give me a good time, Naruto. She whispered, sending chills down Naruto's spine when he felt her warm breath on his right ear. Oh okay then. I gotta go now, see you soon Tenten Naruto waved at her before dashing out of the store. Tenten giggled to herself. So cute. Those whisker marks on his cheeks make him look like a fox, which makes him even cuter. A few months later Naruto, Satsuki and Sakura were under a huge tree. Naruto was sitting in the middle while Satsuki and Sakura were sitting beside him. Sakura had joined Naruto and Satsuki in their training sessions. Satsuki didn't like it at first, as she thought that Sakura was only trying to get closer to her, so that she could be friends with her. But that thought was immediately thrown out of the window when the last Ichiha saw how serious the pink-haired girl was in becoming a Kinoichi. The trio, they had become the best of friends, thought Satsuki would quickly deny that statement. After training intensely, the trio would usually hang out in Ichiraku Raymond, eating the heavenly Raymond that Tuchi cooked for them. Satsuki had grown a lot mentally. She became attached to Naruto and Sakura, and slowly started forgetting the vengeance she craved, achieving after so many years a measure of happiness. She was attached to Naruto more than Sakura. They could relate their circumstances with each other. Both of them had lost their families. When left alone, she and Naruto would discuss about it. Satsuki now secretly craved friendship. She had realized how lonely she was because she was denying it the whole time, and also because seeing friendship and teamwork as trivial matters. If she was to be put in a genin team with two other people, Satsuki hoped that those two would be Naruto and Sakura. Sakura and Satsuki's relationship started out as rocky at first, but Sakura remained patient because she understood the Ichiha situation, just like how she now understood Naruto's. Sakura tried to be the supportive friend for Satsuki, and Satsuki was grateful for it. Before that, the Ichiha would scoff at the idea of being grateful for friendship, especially with Sakura, but now it was different. The two would find the time to discuss their hopes and fears. Satsuki didn't reveal much, but for Sakura it was enough because Satsuki was opening up. In the strength department, the three had grown tremendously over the past months. In her free time, Sakura volunteered to work at Kanoha Hospital, which serves the medical needs of ninja and other villagers in Kanahagakur. Her medical skill has improved tremendously, and so did her chakra control. It was also her that introduced Naruto and Satsuki to the tree climbing practice. Tree climbing practice is a training method used to gain more skills with chakra control. This training involves focusing a fixed amount of chakra to the bottom of one's feet, and using that to climb a tree without using one's hands. If the stream of chakra is too weak, the user will lose their footing on the tree and fall off. If it is too strong, the user will be pushed away from the tree, causing the tree to fracture around the point of contact, and the user will fall. The concept of this exercise is similar to magnetics. With that exercise, the trio's chakra control skyrocketed, with Naruto finally being able to perform the clone jutsu. It was this wretched jutsu that made Naruto fail the graduation exams three times in a row. This is a basic technique that every shinobi can use. In fact, Kanahagakur's Ninja Academy prevents students from graduating unless they're able to perform this technique. Satsuki's proficiency with her Sharingan had improved too. She was now able to use it for longer periods of time with her chakra reserves, increasing a lot too. Naruto had improved a lot. He was getting stronger and faster. He had sped through volume 2 and 3 of the book about Fuenjutsu Hiruzen gave him. The second was an introduction in synced and localized reactions, i.e. explosive tags, as well as building multifaceted arrays. Volume 3 of his Fuenjutsu books was about manipulating chakra networks. 
This volume demonstrated how chakra suppressor. The volume included a detailed diagram of the chakra system, along with the placement of every tenketsu. Naruto was a genius at Fuenjutsu courtesy of his Uzumaki genes. He also found out about his elemental affinity with chakra induction paper, pieces of paper made from a special type of tree that is grown and fed with chakra that allow his elemental affinity to be identified. Naruto found out that he had wind, water, lightning and fire release. He had bought the paper for Sakura and Satsuki too. Satsuki had lightning and fire release, while Sakura had earth and water release as her elemental affinity. Naruto looked up at the sky and saw a hawk flying over him. He smiled a little. This time, I will pass and take that first step into becoming Hokage believe it. It has been one year since Naruto received the helpful system. It was also a day before the academy graduation exams would take place. Currently, Hiruzen was battling his worst enemy, paperwork. He hated it, he hated it more than the civilian council. The civilian council was one hell of a burden. They were extremely corrupt. To them, money mattered more than the village's safety. Thankfully, the shinobi council wasn't a burden as they could take care of themselves without stepping out of line. It was the civilian council who made Naruto's life hell. It was the civilian council who bribed the instructors in the academy to sabotage him. It was the civilian council who made it impossible for Konoha's economy to boom like it once did for a short period of time during Minato's reign. Hiruzen decided to abolish it one day. He was snapped out his dark thoughts by someone who walked into his office unannounced. That person was Kakashi Haddock, famed as Kakashi of the Sharingan and copy ninja Kakashi. He is one of Konoha's most talented ninja, regularly looked to for advice and leadership, despite his personal dislike of responsibility. Kakashi has spiky silver hair often oriented to his left side dark gray eyes, and typically had a relaxed and lazy expression. During the Third Shinobi World War, his left eye was damaged, leaving a vertical scar from the injury. The eye was shortly afterwards replaced with a Sharingan, which he covers with his forehead protector when he isn't using it. Since early childhood and near constantly, he wears a mask that prevents most of his face from being visible. Even his Ninkan have seen his face so sparingly that most of them don't remember what he looks like unmasked. Kakashi wears Konoha's standard infantry clothing. A flak jacket, dark blue pants, and a long sleeve shirt. He also wears fingerless gloves with metal plates on the backhand and is seen with a chain necklace underneath. Ah, Kakashi. How are you doing? Hiruzen asked Kakashi with a smile on his face. Kakashi looked up at the third Hokage with a lazy expression. Fortunately, I'm still lost on the road of life. Kakashi replied nonchalantly while putting the book he was reading away and into his shuriken holster. The book Kakashi was reading was called Icha Icha Paradise. Icha Icha is a series of adult novels written by Jiraiya, after the commercial failure of the tale of the utterly gutsy shinobi. The Icha Icha novels are based on Jiraiya's experiences in love, particularly his rejections by Tsunade, the slug Sanin. Teenagers are often curious about the book's contents, prompting their parents and other adults to go to great lengths to keep the books away from them. Itcha Itcha Paradise is the first in the series, written in three parts. Its plot is summarized as. The main character and heroine, both new to love, begin dating, and their eyes gradually open to grown-up love. Hiruzen raised an eyebrow at Kakashi's actions. Kakashi never puts the adult novel he was an avid fan of away even when talking to others. This must be serious then. Here is in thought before Kakashi started. Lord Third, I want a specific team. I have already chosen who the members of my team will be if they do pass the graduation exams. Kakashi request bluntly, not wanting to beat around the bush. Here is in was surprised but kept a calm front. Really? And who do you want in your team, Kakashi? Here is in asked the Jonin. Kakashi took out three pieces of paper and laid it out on Hiruzen's desk. Hiruzen ratted and nodded. All right Kakashi, it shall be done. Fuck. Naruto cursed as he blundered. Shikamaru chuckled before checkmating Naruto. Currently, they were playing shogi with each other in class. There was only three people in class, Naruto, Shikamaru and Choji. Naruto was used to the emptiness of the class due to him arriving early every day. Naruto had matured a lot. No longer was he the prankster king from hell. Instead, he was a storage scroll and exploding tag seller, earning buckets of Ryo every day due to the quality of his products. Shogi. 
Level 30 Naruto had gotten to a point where Shikamaru had to actually focus and think about his next moves carefully, in order to not lose to the blonde. Naruto was still a little careless though. A sliding door opened and Satsuki walked into the classroom. She made her way towards the trio of friends. She sat beside Naruto. Satsuki sighed and shook her head after noticing the situation of the game. You big idiot, why didn't you move that piece away when he was clearly threatening you with that piece? Satsuki asked Naruto. Naruto chuckled as he rubbed the back of his head. He. I was focusing on my own strategy that I forgot to be cautious. I'll win soon, Shika. Believe it Naruto declared, making Shikamaru shrug. If you are currently wondering why Satsuki the recluse was currently talking to the lazy genius like they were friends, that's because they are friends. More like acquaintances because Satsuki only found the courage with help from Naruto to speak to Shikamaru weeks ago. The Nara took it well, and now they play shogi every morning before class. Satsuki pushed Naruto a little. Move it, it's my turn. Satsuki demanded. Naruto rolled his eyes. If you wanna sit, sit here. It's much more comfortable. Naruto suggested while patting his lap. Satsuki looked at him with a shocked expression, while her face was as red as a tomato. WH what Satsuki shouted at him. Naruto shrugged. I'm only suggesting, no need to act on it. Naruto replied nonchalantly. If you're wondering why Naruto is acting like this, the answer is simple, Icha Icha showed him the truth. This asshole trying to embarrass me I'll show you. Satsuki shouted in her mind as she exacted revenge by sitting down on Naruto's lap, making sure he got a good look of her butt as she did so. Naruto's face instantly turned crimson. Oi what did I just say, bastard. Naruto shouted, trying his best to not get hard down there, so he won't get slapped in the face by Satsuki. Satsuki smirked as she glared menacingly at him. What's wrong, loser? Can't handle a woman like me? This can be considered training you know. Other villages will send Kanoichi to seduce you and get info out of you. If you can't handle me, then what chance do you have against other women? Satsuki asked while smirking evilly at him. Satsuki was so evil she purposely adjusted her seat a little, making Naruto's little warrior down there even more excited. Shikamaru groaned while Choji looked away from the scene with an embarrassed blush on his face. What a drag. I'm just glad that none of her shitty fanboys are here yet, or else it'll be even more troublesome. Take your seats everyone Aruka ordered as everyone quickly sat down. Satsuki sat on the seat in front of Naruto with a triumphant smirk on her face, while Naruto had a crimson red blush on his face. Good everyone is here. Iruka whispered. Alright the graduation exam start now this exam will be held in several parts. The first will be a test of your academic knowledge. This will test if you have been paying attention to my lectures over the years, following that will be accuracy. You will be tested on your kunai and shuriken technique. Following that will be a test of your tojutsu. This will be a tournament-style test in which you will spar with each other, your performance will be watched carefully, and you will be graded based on your performance. Your parents have been invited to watch the tournament as well, so try not to goof around. We will break for lunch after that. Immediately after lunch has ended you will be tested on Jinjutsu and finally Ninjutsu. Any questions? Iruka asked the class. Iruka sensei does the winner of the tournament get extra credit for winning or no? One civilian-born student asked. No the winner will not receive extra credit for winning the tournament. Dang. No more questions. Good we will begin then. The written test started. Naruto was handed a piece of paper by another instructor. His name is Mizuki, and he is Iruka's assistant instructor. Mizuki has white shoulder-length hair with a slight hint of blue to it and green eyes. He wore the standard attire of the Kanohan Inn before his defection, which included flak jacket and forehead protector, that he wore like a bandana. Naruto is wary of Mizuki because he can sense the killer intent directed towards him, whenever he and Mizuki are in the same room. He looked at the test paper handed to him and was baffled. What the fuck? I don't know any of this. I thought Sakura-chan said that the test will include this year's syllabus. Naruto looked at Shikamaru's paper. It was completely different and looked much easier to do. Shikamaru looked at Naruto's test paper and raised a brow at it. His was completely different from Naruto's. He was sure Naruto couldn't even solve one of them. Quick Naruto, tell Sensei you got the wrong paper before the test starts. Shikamaru warned. Naruto widened his eyes before raising his hand, gaining Aruka's attention. 
Haruka-sensei. I got the wrong paper. It's different from the others Naruto revealed. Haruka quickly went over and looked at Naruto's test paper. You're right Naruto. Wait a moment, I'll get you a new one. Haruka replied before going off to get the correct test paper for him. After receiving the correct test paper from Haruka, Naruto quickly thanked Shikamaru who hummed back lazily. The written test started a few minutes later. While his students were working on their test papers. Haruka looked at the paper Naruto handed him. Only scientists could answer these questions. And why is there chakra on this paper? Could it be a Jinjutsu? Haruka thought while putting two fingers on the paper. Kai. He whispered, disrupting the chakra flow on the paper. Haruka was right, there was a Jinjutsu being casted on the test paper. When the Jinjutsu was reversed, it revealed that there was no test paper, only a blank one. Haruka narrowed his eyes and looked at Mizuki who was the one who handed Naruto the test paper. Mizuki, what is the meaning of this? The written test ended more quickly than Naruto thought, but maybe it was because he knew the answers to these questions, and he wasn't as nervous as he was the last three times he took this test. After Aruka collected their test papers, they headed outside and lined up for their accuracy test. Naruto opened the system and looked at his shuriken jutsu skill. Shuriken jutsu. Level 10 reduce strength needed to throw shuriken by 20% and increase shuriken flying speed by 20%. Naruto had realized long ago that the skill didn't improve his accuracy, and that it was something he needed to improve himself, and he was fine with it. Training with Satsuki really improved his precision a lot since she specialized in shuriken jutsu. Since they were rivals, he improved a lot so he could match her skill. It flew by quickly with Naruto gaining a 10 tenths accuracy. Satsuki, Sakura and surprisingly Hinata, achieved the same score as him. Woohoo congrats Hinata. Your amazing Naruto cheered Hinata who blushed and smiled warmly at him. Thank you, Naruto-kun. Hinata replied to him, making his grin widen. Naruto noticed that Hinata has gained a lot more confidence over the past few months. He didn't know how, but he was glad that she was getting out of that shy and anxious shell that she's been covering herself with every day. Hinata knew the answer to his question. It's because she gained motivation to improve and be confident from him. Hinata was a certified stalker. She would sometimes stalk Naruto because she was extremely afraid to approach him and had increased shyness and speechlessness when around him. Hinata smiled as she stood beside her friends Kiba and Ino. She remembered the day that she decided to change. Flashback months before the graduation exam. It was an off day for the students at the academy. Hinata was stalking Naruto. She followed him until he reached a clearing. She hid behind a tree and saw that Naruto was warming up. She audibly gasped as she saw the people approaching him while he was warming up. It was Satsuki and Sakura. Hinata was confused about what was going to happen. Are they going to fight? Or are they going to talk? Her questions were answered when Sakura started speaking. Hey, I have a new technique to share with you guys. It's a chakra control technique. Sakura revealed as she held up a scroll for Naruto and Satsuki to see. The two sat down as Sakura began explaining the importance of the technique and how to perform it. Hinata understood now. They were training together. And it seems that this has been happening for a long time now. You guys understand. Sakura asked her friends as she rolled up the scroll. Satsuki nodded. We'll have this down in a week. Satsuki answered confidently before getting up and walking away from them. Hey. Where are you going? I thought you wanted to train. Naruto shouted at Satsuki who glared at him. Shut up and let me pee in silence, Naruto. Satsuki muttered before activating her one Tomo Sharingan to intimidate him. Naruto was taken aback by her outburst and pouted. He crossed his arms and looked away from her. Satsuki smirked and deactivated her Sharingan before walking into the forest. Hinata looked on as Naruto began talking with a Sakura. So Naruto, what do you think about Hinata? Sakura asked, making Hinata widen her lavender eyes at the question before giving her full attention to the topic. Oh Hinata. She's cool but very mysterious. The only thing I know about her is that she's from the Hyuga clan's main branch, and she has the Byakugan. I wanna be friends her, but she's always faints whenever I try to talk to her. Naruto pouted as he finished his sentence. Tell me more. Sakura replied as she sat beside him. Naruto hummed before continuing to speak. She's really shy and anxious. That's not gonna be good in the long run. 
She's gonna be a shinobi you know, being anxious in a mission isn't really a good thing. Believe it. Naruto then sighed as Sakura listened to him. I wanna help her out and be her friend. I wanna find out what problems she's going through and help her get over it as a friend should. But as I said before, she always has this weird reactions whenever I talk to her. It's making it impossible. Hinata was on the verge of tears hearing Naruto's words. He was right, she was the one trying to run away from him, instead of doing all that she can to face him. But it wasn't entirely her fault that Naruto's attempts to befriend her was failing miserably. Hinata has overwhelming kindness that can render her unable to respond or act for fear of offending somebody. Her father's constant push to alter this personality trait when she was younger only made it worse. It eroded Hinata's self-confidence and made her even more bashful because she gained so little faith in herself and her own opinions. She sees herself as a failure. It got even worse when her father and much of the Hyuga clan had decided she was a lost cause who would never amount to anything. Her primary motivation to keep going was Naruto with whom she has been fascinated since meeting him. Suddenly, a flying kunai stuck to a tree, making Hinata squeal in shock and turn around to see who threw it. It was Satsuki. Satsuki had knew that Hinata was spying on them from the start. She used the excuse of going to pee to get to Hinata's position. SS Satsuki-san Hinata stuttered out. Satsuki sighed. Finally you noticed. Satsuki grumbled before approaching her. Hinata backed up against the tree as Satsuki looked down at her. Instead of trying to get physically and mentally stronger, you became a creepy stalker. Well, I ain't Naruto, but I'm 100% sure that he isn't going to like those kinds of people. Satsuki smirked at Hinata's horrified expression. Why don't you just accept that Naruto isn't going to notice you if you keep on being a stuttering mess? Why don't you try to change that? As far as I can tell, you're an aspiring shinobi, and you want to prove yourself to someone like me and Naruto. Satsuki grabbed Hinata's collar and pulled her in, scaring the shit out of her. Standing here being a stalker won't do anything but ruin your already crumbling life. Why don't you change that? You get what you work for, Princess of the Hyuga, not what you wish for. They think you're a no-good failure, prove those assholes wrong. Satsuki released her grip on Hinata and started walking away from her. It's on you to get you where you want to be, Hinata. Thank you for telling me what I needed to hear, Satsuki-san. Hinata thought before looking at Satsuki who nodded at her. Hinata smiled and nodded back at the Acheha. The shuriken accuracy test ended smoothly. Then came the Tejutsu tournament. Naruto took stood among the crowd of students, waiting to be called up by Aruka. What the students didn't notice was that there were jonins hiding in the back watching them. Kakashi who was hiding with his fellow jonin, was staring at Naruto. He smiled warmly under the mask. Minato-sensei, Kishina-san. If you two were here, you two would be the proudest parents in the world. He thought to himself. Hey Kakashi, what team did the old man assign you? Someone asked him. Kakashi turned his head to look at Asuma Saratobi, Jonin of Kanahagakur Saratobi clan, and a former member of the Twelve Guardian Ninja, the bodyguards of the Land of Fire's Daimyo. Asuma is also the son of Hiruzen. Asuma is a tall man, with brown eyes, olive skin, short black spiky hair, and a beard. His clothing consisted of the standard Kanohe Ninja uniform with the sleeves rolled up halfway, flak jacket, regular shinobi sandals and forehead protector. He also wore a sash that had the kanji for fire marked on it around his waist, a pair of black bangles, and bandages wrapped around the arms of his sleeves. He assigned me Team 7, which is historically designated as a first response team. But I made a specific request for specific shinobi to be in the team. Kakashi explained lazily while reading his Itcha Itcha Paradise. Asuma was surprised. Wait, you can do that? Asuma asked, a little bit baffled at Kakashi's revelation. Kakashi looked at him with his signature lazy expression. Yes Asuma, you can do that. But it's too late for you to put in a request now because you already have your team assigned to you by Lord Hokage. Kakashi replied. Asuma sighed and nodded before taking out a cigarette. He lighted it and started smoking it. Yeah, I was assigned Team 10. I'm gonna be training the next generation of the Inoshikacho trio. Asuma explained. Kakashi hummed. You better train them good, Asuma. It's a big responsibility for someone new to taking teams like you, especially one as big as training the next generation of the Inoshikacho trio. You talk as if you've trained a genin team before. Asuma grumbled, Kakashi smirked under his mask. 
They're all incompetent shinobi. If they don't even know what teamwork is, then they have no chance of surviving out in the real world. Bakashi replied, Asuma sighed, finding no reason to argue against him. How about you, Kurinai? What team are you assigned to lead? Asuma asked a woman standing quietly beside him. She was Kurinai Yuhi. Kurinai is a fair-skinned woman of slender build. She has long black untamed hair reaching her upper back, and very unique eyes that are red in color, with an additional ring in them. She wears makeup consisting of red lipstick and purple eyeshadow. Her regular outfit consists of a red mesh armor blouse with only the right sleeve visible. Overall, this is very broad material which resembles bandages with a pattern on it, similar to those of rose thorns. Her hands and upper thighs are also wrapped in bandages, and she wears the Kanoha forehead protector and regular shinobi sandals. Although I just became a jonin, Lord Third assigned me to be the leader of Team 8, a tracking team. Kurinai explained. Kakashi was surprised a little although he didn't show it. A tracking team? That's interesting considering you specialize in Jinjutsu and your prowess in it. The copy ninja commented. Kurinai shook her head. You shouldn't see it that way, Kakashi. Whether or not I'm incompatible with my team's fighting style, I will still train them to be some of the most upstanding shinobi this generation has ever seen. Kurinai replied seriously. Asuma smirked as he wrapped his arm around Kurinai's shoulders. That's my Kurinai for ya, Kakashi. Asuma replied, making Kurinai blush and push the jonin away. Please be professional, Asuma. Even though we are in a relationship, we are still shinobi, so we still need to have the competence or skill expected of a professional. Kurinai scolded. Asuma chuckled. Yeah yeah. Asuma chuckled before crossing his arms. It's a shame guy isn't here. He loves to jutsu fights. Asuma commented. Kakashi shook his head while reading his adult novel. I'm glad he isn't here, Asuma. He'll reveal our positions with his youth talk. You're right about that. Be quiet you too, it's starting. Naruto and his class was currently in the Jinjutsu portion of the exam. Once he finished it he will immediately move into the final portion of the exam, which is the Ninjutsu portion of the exam. Iruka began the exams calling everyone in alphabetical order. Naruto sat down and recounted the Tajutsu exam a few minutes ago. He blew through the tournament, fighting people who don't even know how to punch. Satsuki, Sakura and Hinata were the same. Naruto found himself fighting Shikamaru who immediately gave up as soon as the fight started. Shikamaru called it a tactical retreat, explaining that he didn't want to be humiliated in the Tajutsu fight against Naruto out of all people. Naruto's final opponent was surprising, it was Satsuki. He didn't know who organized the fight, but it sure as hell wasn't Aruka sensei's doing. But the two accepted it nonetheless. Before her fight with Naruto, Satsuki defeated Hinata and Sakura. Hinata lost because Aruka had set the rules of not being able to use ninjutsu, jinjutsu and their clan's respective dejutsu, in the tajutsu fight. If Hinata was able to use her by Akugan, it would be a whole different story as Satsuki would have had her chakra flow disabled and impeded by Hinata's gentle fist style. Although Sakura also put up a good fight against the Ichiha, she still lost because Satsuki was faster and more skilled in Tajutsu than her. Naruto and Satsuki tied in their fight. It has always been a tie ever since Naruto won his first fight against Satsuki. He looked at Satsuki who had a couple bruises on her face. Sakura can throw one hell of a punch that's for sure. Snap out of it. Naruto snapped out of his musings when he was violently shook by someone. He looked up and saw that it was Ino who shook him. What? Naruto asked her. Ino deadpanned at him. It's your turn to take the test Naruto. Ino replied. Naruto nodded and got up. Thanks for calling me. Naruto thanked her. Ino smiled and nodded back at him. Naruto entered the room Aruka and Mizuki were in. Naruto widened his eyes as he heard a loud banging sound coming from behind him. He turned around and was horrified at the scene. He saw a bloodied Satsuki, Sakura, Shikamaru, Choji and Hinata were all lying on the ground with a bunch of weapons stabbed into their bodies. Kai Naruto declared before flaring his chakra. He and released a very powerful pulse of chakra that washed over the room. His chakra dispelled the Jinjutsu he was under. Naruto. What the heck was that? A shocked Aruka asked Naruto. Naruto grinned sheepishly and scratched his head. It's my own special technique. Believe it I call it Chakra Pulse. 
Since I had so much trouble stopping my chakra flow in order to cancel the Jinjutsu I tried to find another way. So instead of stopping my chakra, I release a wave that disrupts the caster's chakra instead, and releases the Jinjutsu. Any Jinjutsu struck by the wave is released if the right amount of chakra is applied. Believe it Naruto explained proudly. Haruka's jaw dropped. He had never thought something like that was possible. Yet an academy student had designed and developed the technique on his own. It may be a high B rank maybe low A rank jutsu. I'm definitely telling Lord Third to put that in Naruto's ninja profile. Haruka thought before shaking his head. Haruka gave Naruto a full mark on the jinjutsu portion of the exam. Alright, now comes the ninjutsu portion of the exam. Please perform the transformation jutsu. Haruka requested before Naruto weaved the necessary hand seals to execute the technique which were dog, boar and lastly ram. This technique is most often used to disguise the user as another person, but they can also turn into an animal, plant, or inanimate objects. A plume of smoke covered Naruto before clearing up, revealing Naruto to have transformed into the third Hokage. Maruka hummed as he walked around the transformed Naruto. It was a flawless replication from the original Hiruzen, earning Naruto lots of points. Haruka nodded as Naruto cancelled the technique. And now, the substitution jutsu. Haruka requested as Naruto weaved the hand seals necessary for the jutsu. Suddenly, the potted plant from the classroom two doors down disappeared and Naruto take its place in a flawless substitution. Substitution jutsu. Level 15 uses 15% 15 less chakra when using the jutsu. When the jutsu maxes out, you are able to use this jutsu without using hand seals. When Naruto returned to where Aruka was, he found Aruka nodding while the potted plant he substituted with on the position where he was previously standing. Impressive, now I need to see you performing the clone jutsu. Aruka requested. Um Aruka sensei I think we might need to take it outside. Naruto suggested. Aruka raised a curious brow at him. Why? He asked. Naruto laughed nervously. You'll see. Clone Jutsu Puaf. Haruka and Mizuki coughed violently, while fanning away the large plume of white smoke that came after Naruto shouting the Jutsu's name. When the smoke cleared, it revealed an army of Naruto and his clones standing before the two instructors. Haruka smiled proudly at the scene as Naruto made the clones dispel. He walked towards Naruto who looked up at him. Close your eyes, Naruto. Aruka requested and Naruto followed it by closing his eyes. He felt Aruka play something on his head. Alright, you can open them now. Naruto opened it and widened his eyes. He saw Aruka smiling warmly at him while his forehead protector was gone. Naruto widened his eyes as he touched his forehead, feeling the cold steel of the headband. Congratulations on graduating, Naruto. You are now a genin. The road to becoming Hokage is long, arduous, full of challenges and sacrifices. But I believe you can do it, you are my student after all. Haruka congratulated him. Naruto's expression brightened as he immediately hugged Haruka tightly. Yay thanks Haruka sensei you're the best hey. Stop that you're hugging too tightly 3pm Naruto was leaving the academy with a proud smile on his face. He stopped when he heard a voice calling him from behind. Naruto there you are. Can we talk for a minute? Naruto turned around to see Mizuki walking towards him with a smile on his face. What did you need Mizuki-sensei? Naruto asked him. Mizuki's smile widened. I was watching your exam closely Naruto, and to be honest I think that you would be wasting your skills as a genin. So I wanted to offer you the chance to take an advanced placement exam, so you can go straight to Chunin. Mizuki explained to him. Is Satsuki being offered the chance to... Naruto asked Mizuki who shook his head. No. She still has some problems that bar her from taking the exam. You on the other hand have nothing stopping you from taking it. Naruto tipped his head to the side, contemplating the offer. He knew Mizuki was lying as there was no such exam, only the Chunin exams that is held twice a year. What would I have to do? Naruto asked, wanting to know Mizuki's reasons for tricking him. I can't tell you unless you decide to take the exam. If you fail there is no pressure, you will still get your assignments in a week, and no harm done. Okay. I'll do it tell me. Tell me Naruto grinned broadly at him. Mizuki grinned. Hook, line and sinker. He thought before he continued speaking to him. Sneak into the Hokage's office and steal a scroll that is labeled forbidden. Don't worry he is in on the exam. 
All you have to do after that is get away and keep the scroll for 3 hours while you are being chazzed. A typical Chunin type mission. Plus you get to learn a jutsu from it as a bonus. Mizuki explained the test to the blonde. Where do I go? Naruto asked him. If you can get the scroll to this location while keeping it safe within the time allowed and learn a jutsu you pass early. But you have to demonstrate the jutsu and get the scroll there unharmed. Mizuki said while pulling a map from his hip pouch and showing the eager genin. Nodding in excitement, Naruto beamed. When does the exam start? Naruto asked eagerly. It starts now. Good luck. He said and snickered as the boy took off excitedly. I'll just wait about half an hour after he leaves the tower to alert people. Then not only will I be allowed to kill the demon, but I'll also be out of the village and on my way to Orochimaru-sama. Naruto easily snuck into the Hokage residence. He had done this many times in the past so that he could prank his surrogate grandfather. He had never lost his touch even though he stopped pranking for a year now. Naruto followed Mizuki's instructions and grabbed the Scroll of Seals. The Scroll of Seals is a scroll containing instructions about how to perform various dangerous jutsu. Uncertain types of jutsu were deemed forbidden following the end of the Warring States period, the first Hokage placed the information about these jutsu within the Scroll of Seals. The scrolls were subsequently stored at the Hokage residence, unavailable to be read by anyone but the Hokage. Naruto was about to leave when the door opened to reveal Hiruzen. They stared silently at each other. It was awkward being caught red-handed like this. I can explain Gramps. Naruto quickly told Hiruzen who raised an eyebrow at him while smiling in amusement. Better start talking, Naruto. So you're telling me that Mizuki is a potential traitor who is using you to carry out his plan. He tricked you by saying that this is a secret advancement exam, and that I'm in on it, I've never heard of such an idiotic plan more than his in my life. Hiruzen recounted Naruto's explanation while chuckling to himself. Naruto, are you ready to go on your first official mission as a shinobi? Hiruzen asked. Naruto nodded excitedly. Yeah I am alright. Yuzumaki Naruto, your mission is to catch Mizuki in the act and arrest him before he can escape the village. This mission will be a beer ank mission. You will get a reward of 100,000 Ryo for completing it. Hiruzen ordered seriously. Naruto nodded and saluted Hiruzen. You got it, Gramps I'll be back in no time, believe it. Naruto replied before using the body flicker jutsu to disappear, taking the scroll of seals with him. Heading to an entirely different clearing he sat down and opened the large scroll. He read the first jutsu he came across. Shadow clone jutsu, a clone technique created by Taburama Senju. Wow, it even has an explanation of the jutsu. Naruto muttered as he started reading through the explanation of the jutsu. This jutsu allows the user to create one or more copies of themselves. The user's chakra is evenly divided between themselves and their clones. Creating one clone will give it half the user's chakra, creating two clones will give each a third of the user's chakra, and so on. Depending on how much chakra the user has and how many clones they make, this rapid depletion of their reserves can be dangerous. Because of this, usually only those of at least Jonin level can safely use the standard shadow clone jutsu. The multiple shadow clone jutsu which creates hundreds of clones to the standard versions dozens, is unsafe to the point of being forbidden. Because they are visually identical and possess the same chakra as the user, shadow clones are indistinguishable from their original, not even by Dejutsu. Once created, shadow clones can serve a number of purposes. They can be used as decoys, either by keeping opponents preoccupied or, because they can't be told apart, concealing the original's identity. If enough shadow clones are created, they can simply overwhelm an opponent, pinning them down or attacking from multiple directions. Shadow clones can also be used simply to assist the user, joining the user for tactics they can't do alone or being sent to carry out tasks while the user is busy. Shadow clones possess all the same memories as the user, and so will react to unforeseen obstacles, just as the user would in the same circumstances. Because they have their own chakra, shadow clones can perform other jutsu, including making more shadow clones. Naruto understood the jutsu. But he wasn't getting towards the good part yet. When he did, he was shocked to say the least. Shadow clones usually disperse once they are struck hard enough, but they have been shown capable of enduring injuries for a time. When a clone's task is completed, it can disperse itself or be dispersed by its user. 
Once dispersed, the clone's experiences and remaining chakra are transferred back to the user. The shared experiences make shadow clones useful for intelligence gathering. A shadow clone can be sent into hostile territory, gather information without endangering the user, and disperse when finished, thus transferring what they've learned. Alternatively, shadow clones can recon an area, dispersing when they've found what they're looking for, in order to let the user know the target's location. Wait a second Naruto narrowed his eyes and began thinking deeply. If the clone can give me memories, can it also be used for training? I gotta ask Gramps about it later. I gotta learn this jutsu. Mizuki doesn't know what's coming to get him believe it, I found you. Haruka declared. Naruto looked at Haruka with a grin on his face. No, I found you. Naruto joked, making Aruka chuckled before leaning into Naruto's ear. Lord Third told us about Mizuki and frankly, I don't know what to say. I never thought Mizuki would be a traitor to Konoha. Aruka whispered. Naruto kept quiet, knowing Aruka had more to say. The Anbu are approaching our position. They will assist you if you aren't able to defeat Mizuki. The academy instructor added. Naruto smirked back at Aruka. I won't let those guys take the credit. I only learned one jutsu in the scroll, but I'm sure I can beat his ass up. Naruto replied confidently while having a foxy grin on his face. Suddenly, a barrage of kunai flew towards Aruka's direction. Aruka leaped back, dodging the barrage. Mizuki landed on a tree branch and sneered at Aruka. Naruto. Hand me the scroll now. Mizuki demanded. Naruto gave Mizuki the middle finger. Yeah right asshole. I don't know what you plan to do with this, but I ain't giving it to you. I read through everything in this scroll, I won't give it to you even if I die. Naruto declared as he remembered one specific jutsu he read in the scroll of seals. Summoning jutsu. Impure world reincarnation. How the hell did the second Hokage even create this jutsu? Naruto thought to himself before shaking those thoughts of. He wasn't about to be distracted when he's on a mission. TCH. There's no point in you having it Naruto I'll tell you something. I'll tell you the truth. The truth about why everyone in this village hates you and stays away like you're the plague, Mizuki grinned sadistically while pointing at Naruto. Aruka widened his eyes in disbelief and horror. Mizuki don't Aruka shouted desperately, but it was already too late for that. Mizuki chuckled before shaking his head. You remember the Kaiubi attack 12 years ago right since that attack, a new rule was created. This rule was never meant to be told to you, Naruto, what the hell are you saying? Naruto whispered with a confused expression. Mizuki laughed evilly. The rule is that nobody is allowed to talk about the fact that you are the nine-tailed demon fox. Mizuki shouted. Stop it, Haruka shouted, but was promptly ignored by Mizuki who sneered at Naruto who was shocked at the information. WH what? Naruto whispered, confused as hell. It means that you are the demon fox that destroyed the village 12 years ago on October 10th, you are the monster fox that killed Aruka's parents and destroyed Konoha. You were sealed up by the fourth Hokage who you admired so much, and you have been lied to by everyone, didn't you find it odd how everyone hated you Aruka is the same behind that kind smile, he despises you just face it, nobody will ever accept a demon like you Mizuki declared. You're right Mizuki the demon fox would do that. Naruto widened his eyes in shock at Aruka's words. He looked at Aruka who had a smirk on his face. But that's not what Yuzumaki Naruto would do. Naruto is one of my excellent students. Sure he may have his flaws, but he's only human. He isn't the demon fox. He is a citizen of Kanahagakur, and he is Yuzumaki Naruto, the one who will become Hokage Aruka declared seriously. You would accept the demon, after all the suffering he caused then hurry up and die with him, Mizuki shouted angrily as he took out a large arm-length shuriken shuriken tied to his back and threw it at Aruka. Dai Aruka widened his eyes as the giant shuriken rushed towards him. Suddenly, someone appeared in front of him and clashed with the shuriken with a kunai. It was Naruto and he had a murderous look on his face. He used his strength and deflected the giant shuriken. The shuriken flew to his left and landed on the ground. So that's why they hate me, Naruto whispered before putting his kunai in his shuriken holster. He glared at Mizuki and dropped the scroll of seals onto the ground. Naruto leaked out his killing intent, scaring Mizuki who thought he saw an image of the Kaiubi behind Naruto for a second. Don't touch Aruka sensei the blonde declared seriously. Shut up I'll kill a brat like you in one shot Mizuki yelled back. Naruto held up his hands and performed a hand seal. 
His index and middle fingers from both hands were crossed. Try it trash. I'll return the pain a thousand times over then do it demon fox Mizuki shouted in a rage. Naruto grinned savagely at him. Multi-shadow clone Jutsu Puam. An enormous plume of white smoke engulfed the area. When it cleared, it revealed an army of shadow clones Naruto created standing around the battlefield in various positions. There were ones crouching on the tree branches, there were some grinning murderously at him, and there were some giving Mizuki the middle finger. Haruka's jaw dropped at the jutsu Naruto used. Creating even a single shadow clone Because of how many clones are created with a multiple shadow clone technique, the chakra cost is far greater, rendering it unsafe to use for most people other than the Hokage. What's wrong? Come at me, one of the shadow clones shouted at Mizuki who was absolutely horrified at the scene. Weren't you going to kill me in one shot, another shadow clone shouted. The real Naruto smirked and cracked his knuckles before folding up his sleeves, his clones mimicking his actions. Well then, I'll start things off you shall no pain, Naruto declared before using the body flicker jutsu, appearing in front of Mizuki. Bomb. Mizuki was punched in the solar plexus by Naruto's right fist. Naruto then kicked Mizuki straight in the jaw, sending him flying up a bit. One of Naruto's shadow clones leaped towards Mizuki and grabbed him by his collar. He flipped in midair and threw Mizuki at the ground. Mizuki crashed onto the ground and was immediately picked up by another clone. The clone punched Mizuki in the nose, breaking it. The clones pushed Mizuki away. Each clone got at least a punch or kick in. Ruthless kicks to the balls were made sure to be given. Three clones kicked Mizuki on the back together, sending him flying up to the air. Naruto leaped high up to the air and did multiple flips. Naruto Uzumaki barraged by him. Naruto executed a spinning heel drop, sending Mizuki crashing onto the ground face first, dealing devastating damage to the already defeated man. Naruto landed on the ground, he smirked savagely before dispelling his clones. He narrowed his eyes and gasped as he got a massive headache when he received all of his shadow clones' memories. He grit through it and recovered while Aruka watched Naruto with concern on his face. Naruto shook his head before grinning down at Mizuki. He spat on the man, disrespecting him even more. Serves you right, traitor. So that's what happened, Lord Third. Aruka finished reporting to Hiruzen who nodded back at him. All right, you can go now Aruka. Hiruzen replied. Aruka bowed before using body flicker to exit the office. Naruto grinned at Hiruzen, immediately sitting in front of him. Hiruzen smiled proudly at him. Naruto was like his grandson, and Naruto thought of him as his surrogate grandfather, which made him extremely happy. Congratulations on graduating, Naruto. Hiruzen congratulated Naruto who grinned at him. Thanks Gramps. This is just the start. I'm one step away from wearing that hat. Believe it. Naruto shouted while pointing at Hiruzen's customary hat which is a part of his official uniform. I believe you will one day be wearing this hat and sitting on this seat if you keep on working harder, Naruto. But for now, let's get back to business. Hiruzen's immediately got serious. Naruto did too. Let's talk about what Mizuki revealed to you, Naruto. Hiruzen started the discussion. Naruto looked down with a sad expression. I can't believe it I'm the demon who destroyed Konoha. He whispered. Hiruzen shook his head. He grabbed Naruto by the shoulders, making the blonde look up at him. Naruto, I want you to listen carefully. You are not a demon. When the fourth Hokage sealed the Kaiubi into you, he had made it his dying wish for you to be seen as a hero. Hiruzen revealed, surprising Naruto. A hero? Naruto questioned, getting a nod from Siratobi. Why? He continued asking. Because Naruto, it is only thanks to you that the Kaiubi is safely locked away. You are the entire reason that Konoha is still standing today, Saratobi replied. Really? Naruto asked, his voice a little hopeful. Yes, Naruto. You are the very reason Konoha still exists. You are a hero, son. Then, how come everyone hates me? Naruto asked, remembering those glares he received whenever he walked through the streets of Konoha. Here is inside. They don't hate you Naruto. They just don't understand Fuinjutsu. After all, it is one of the most obscure ninja arts there is, and the hardest to master. Very few people understand this, and so when something like a demon gets sealed into somebody, they are unsure whether the seal can really hold something like that, a being of such power in. 
you have to understand that when the Kaiubi attacked, many good ninja died that day, and because of that they are unwilling to accept you, fearing that you are really just the Kaiubi in human form. Here is an explained, making Naruto frown. That made sense, in some sick and twisted way. But now that he knew why he was hated, he had to wonder what he should do. Would people be able to accept him? Could he get people to see past the Kaiubi and look at him as Naruto? At the moment it didn't seem all that likely. After all, the people of Konoha had 12 years to get over their loss and see Naruto for himself. Then again he had not really helped in that regard. He had been so desperate for attention that he had turned to pranks, since even bad attention was better than no attention. But maybe if I show them that how good a ninja I am, and that I'm willing to protect the village, maybe I can change their minds. Naruto thought to himself. He looked at Hiruzen with fiery determination in his bright blue eyes. I'll show them that I'm not the Kaiubi, that I'm Yuzumaki Naruto. Future Hokage of Konoha. I won't let this get to me, ever. Believe it Naruto declared confidently. Hiruzen smiled at seeing the boy's will of fire returning. That's good Naruto. I have no doubt you will eventually get there. However, it will require a lot more hard work than what you are used to. Now that you're a genin, you need to actually take the time to learn about being a shinobi. After all, a hokage is not just the most powerful ninja in the village, he is the smartest and most cunning as well. Here is an explained. Naruto scratched his head. So then you're pretty smart, huh Gramps? Saratobi chuckled at the blonde's words. Naruto, do you know why I earned my nickname the professor? Here is an asked. Naruto tilted his head to the side. Uh because you're smart. Well essentially yes. Saratobi admitted before continuing to speak. However, it is much more than that. I earned the title of the professor because of my ability to read people and react to any given situation both on and off the battlefield. In the many years that I have lived, I have amassed much knowledge from reading books. Things that taught me about shinobi basics, to the more advanced ninja abilities and theories, as well as knowledge on civilian practices like politics, which has become essential for every hokage to know now. He took a minute to curse the second hokage's decision to create the council, the whole reason a hokage needed to know politics. He had been told by his sensei, Taburama Senju, before the second shinobi war started that the he was 100% positive he had been drunk when he came up with the idea. It looked good on paper, having a group of people dedicated to helping the Hokage deal with the everyday affairs of Konoha's civilians. However the reality was far different. Hiruzen had spent more time fighting with the council than anything, and many of the people in it, especially on the civilian side were extraordinarily greedy, always wanting more money, and to line their pockets with more coin. The old Hokage shook his head and banished the dark thoughts. Anyway the point I'm trying to make is that to be a good shinobi requires you to be not just strong, but also smart. He added. I guess that makes sense Naruto stayed silent for a moment before remembering something. Oh yeah. Speaking of being strong you know that awesome jutsu I learned. Naruto asked Hiruzen who nodded at him. The shadow clone jutsu. Yes I know it. Saratobi replied, wondering where Naruto was going with this. The scroll said that when I dispel a clone, its memories return back to me. I was wondering if it can be used for training. Naruto asked Hiruzen. Hiruzen smiled. Hiding behind Naruto boisterous nature of was the mind of a shinobi. Yes, the jutsu is a powerful technique that way, Saratobi replied. Naruto tilted his head in curiosity, how so? He asked him. Hiruzen smiled, here comes the fun part. That jutsu is an excellent method to learn new things with, you can learn just about anything from your clones, from chakra control and jutsu, to the books you read, writing and even to jutsu, since muscle memory is a mental faculty. So it can be used for training, Naruto declared happily. Here is a nodded. Indeed it can. Though I suspect that only you will be able to use this jutsu to its full potential. Why is that? Naruto asked while he was excited at the prospect that there was something only he could do. Because you're the only one who has enough chakra to summon enough clones to really make the training worth it. Most ninja, even jonin, can only make 5 maybe 10 clones if they're lucky, Saratobi answered. Naruto smirked. Ha. I made nearly a thousand in the clearing when I beat the crap out of that bastard Mizuki Naruto replied confidently. That you did, Saratobi chuckled at the boy's enthusiasm before returning back to business mode with a smile on his face. But it will take more than spamming out clones to become a great ninja. 
you will have to train hard and actually be serious about your profession. I can tell you are serious now, but you don't know everything about this world yet, Naruto. Here is an advised him. Naruto thumped his chest. Don't you worry Gramps. I'll train harder than everybody in Konoha. I'll become not only the most powerful Hokage ever, but the strongest shinobi in the elemental nations. That's my promise of a lifetime and you better believe it here is in chuckled. I'm sure you will Naruto. And to help, I have some advice for you. But before I tell you what it is I want you to promise me you will listen to everything I have to say and follow the advice I give you to the letter. Naruto grinned broadly at him. Don't worry Gramps, I promise on my honor as the future Hokage of Konoha, that I will listen to what you have to say and follow your advice. Very well then, son. Now since you are a shinobi you will have access to the ninja section of the library. Exploit that resource as much as you possibly can. You can find scrolls on chakra theory and control. They even have a few books of you and jutsu. You told me you found out about your elemental affinities, there are jutsu there that you can learn and master. Though I would suggest you start from the low level ones. Even low ranking jutsu can be an S rank in the right hands. I would also suggest reading books on things like politics and other civilian practices, if you're going to be Hokage, you will need to know these things. I also want you to find some more Tajutsu style that you can combine with your main Tajutsu style, the strong fist. The basic principles are the most important aspects of being a shinobi, without them you cannot grow because you do not have the essential steps necessary to advance in skill. Naruto nodded, gaining a new sense of motivation and discipline. You got it. I promise, first thing tomorrow morning I will go to the library and look up that information. Naruto frowned for a moment. Though, I don't know if they'll let me in. Naruto added. Hiruzen shook his head. There are those in Konoha that know what Fuenjutsu is. The librarians there are those kinds of people, and they are old friends of mine. So don't worry about it, Naruto. Hiruzen assured while patting Naruto's shoulder. Naruto nodded back, excited to start his new chapter in life. Good. Saratobi smiled. Now you have a whole week to get stronger before you get your Jonin Sensei assigned. I suggest you get started quickly and get used to your new Jutsu. But don't create too much shadow clones or your head will explode from information overload. Hiruzen warned bluntly. Naruto nodded, taking his advice to heart. Now it's getting late, so why don't you get to bed? That way you can start getting stronger early tomorrow. Hiruzen suggested. Naruto got up and grinned at him. Right. I'll be off now I'll see you later Gramps Naruto saluted Hiruzen before disappearing in a blur with the body flicker jutsu. With the knowledge of that jutsu he should be able to grow strong in a tremendous pace. He whispered before looking at the picture of Minato hanging on the wall. Your son is on the path to being a great shinobi, Minato. I hope you and Kishina are watching over him. The next morning Naruto woke up early feeling fresh as a daisy, despite having been up late last night helping deal with a traitor, and the shocking revelations that followed. He stood up and stretched out, making some satisfying cracks in the process. And after that he started to get ready for the day, getting showered, getting dressed, eating his breakfast and then heading for the library. Before he left he looked at his home. Naruto was living in a new apartment now. This apartment was located in the so-called Shinobi district of Konoha. Most of Konoha's Shinobi live here with very few civilians living among them. Naruto got the cheapest apartment with help from Hiruzen. Even though it was the cheapest one, it was a thousand times better than his old one. It was much more spacious and had a more home vibe to it. Naruto closed the front door and did a hand seal. A ceiling formation spread across the wooden door. It was Naruto's personal Fuenjutsu creation called Chakra Binding Trap. If the target tried breaking into his house, the target will be secured by red chakra threads, binding them in place. The technique can last for days on its own. Ever since one burglar got caught in it, no one tried breaking into Naruto's house ever again. As he walked down the street Naruto ignored the glares and mutterings sent his way. While they still kind of bothered him, he refused to let it get to him in any way. Now that he knew why he was hated, he was more determined to make them see that he wasn't some demon, and that he was a proud citizen and shinobi of Konoha. He would start by following his grandfather figure's advice and start getting stronger and smarter. Hence the reason he was heading to the library to study. He still didn't much like the idea of studying except studying Fuenjutsu and Ninjutsu, but he had promised Hiruzen as a future Hokage, so he had to go through with it. 
And if there was one thing Naruto would never do, it was going back on his word. That is his ninja way after all. Kanoha Library is a public library in Kanahagakur. It is centrally located and is accessible by all members of the village. It contains books referring to many subjects ranging from advanced medical textbooks to self-help books about social interaction. Naruto entered the library and looked around, feeling his eyes widen at the sight before him. He had never been to the library before and was amazed at how large the place was. There were about four stories in the library altogether, and all along the walls and in aisles going down the library were books, loads and loads of books. It was giving him a minor headache just looking at them. Naruto made his way to the ninja section of the library. He created five shadow clones and ordered them to grab some books on chakra control, tojutsu styles and books on politics. The real Naruto would be doing intense training, while his clone buddies will he focusing on the information side of things. In a clearing, Naruto looked at his wrists and legs. He didn't have the chance to do it before, but now he could. He created a shadow clone and handed him a bottle of ink and a brush. Naruto sat down on a large rock as the clone began to drawing some seals on him. The clone then repeated the process with his legs. A few hand seals later, Naruto began to feel the effects of the seal. Aside from creating the chakra binding trap technique, Naruto also created his own weight and resistance seals, and now faced more resistance to his movements than before. He no longer needed physical weights wrapped around his limbs. While the weight seals will increase his strength, the resistance seals are specifically designed to help boost his speed. Bushi Bra the memories contained information about basic tojutsu styles and how to perform them. After that he just continued exercising. The next day Naruto created a group of clones to start working on chakra control. Currently, they were working on a basic chakra control exercise called the leaf floating exercise. It was basically floating a leaf over the palm of their hands and making it spin. It was just in one hand at the moment, but Naruto eventually planned on increasing the amount of leaves that he could spin, figuring that the more leaves he could float at the same time, the better his control would be. He also made plans on using heavier objects like shuriken with this exercise sometime in the future. These were not in the scroll his shadow clone had read, but Naruto had always been innovative when coming up with pranks, and that ability was easily carried on into other aspects of his life and career, if he actually set his mind to it. He wanted to at some point be able to spin a LEAF or even heavier objects, on each finger at the same time, rather than using his palms, just to see what it held of course. The other group was working on his tojutsu. They were performing several different styles at the same time. His clones had found several other styles that they felt would be useful, he planned to learn them all, so that he could eventually combine the styles into something that he could call his own style, which would be totally awesome. He could not wait for Satsuki's reaction when fighting him and his new tojutsu style. But there was only really one problem with using shadow clones to train in a physical activity like tojutsu. They could learn the katas of a style due to the fact that muscle memory was a mental faculty, but without a proper sparring partner, it would only do so much. He could completely master all of the katas in a style, yet even then, if he were faced with an opponent with more experience than him, he would lose. Sparring with Satsuki and Sakura would do wonders. His last group was divided into two. One group was reading, most of it was on trap making, fuinjutsu and various other shinobi aspects. All of them were beginner books written to teach the basics, except for the fuinjutsu and trap-making books. Naruto had decided that he was going to be better than all the hokages, and had figured that surpassing the fourth hokage in what he was best known for, would be the best way to show how just how awesome he really was. Naruto himself was working on the physical aspects of his training. Training with Guy really helps him push past his limits. A thousand laps in an hour, a thousand push-ups, a thousand squats, a thousand sit-ups, a thousand punches and lastly, a thousand kicks. And that was his morning routine. Naruto found himself laying on the ground as he panted, exhaustion actually setting in. It was an odd feeling, he reflected. Naruto had never really felt this tired before, something he was beginning to suspect he got from the Kaiubi. Oh sure, sometimes he could get sleepy but never from lack of energy. Right now he was really exhausted. With a sigh Naruto sat up, he was done with his morning workout, but he still had half a day left. Turning to his clones, Naruto gave the order to dispel. 
Unfortunately they all decided to dispel at once, even with his enhanced healing factor, Naruto could not withstand 20 clones, dispelling at the same time, which when combined with his exhaustion from his new morning routine, ended up knocking the blonde unconscious. He definitely needed to make his clones dispel in groups to avoid the pounding headache next time. Leaf Concentration Practice Level Max A Way to Teach Students How to Control Their Chakra More Effectively Jutsu uses 5% less chakra. Leaf floating exercise. Level 10 Jutsu uses 5% less chakra. Tree walking. Level 10 Jutsu uses 5% less chakra. Full control over 10% of your chakra it was the next morning, and it saw Naruto doing much the same as he did yesterday. His clones had split off into four groups of five, they would again work on chakra control, to jutsu, viewing jutsu and reading on politics and economics. Meanwhile Naruto would do his physical workout. It was a little harder than before, Naruto had decided to increase the weights by 20 kilograms, so he was having a few problems. But he still managed to pull through his routine, and this time, he was not quite as exhausted, since his body was already adjusting due to the Kaiubi. After lunch Naruto created another batch of 100 clones, and had them restart everything they had previously been doing. Meanwhile Naruto attempted to meditate. In the book on the basics of chakra theory, he had read that by meditating a ninja could sharpen their senses, as well as their mind, and familiarize themselves with their chakra. So Naruto sat down and began feeling the chakra in his body. It wasn't hard, Naruto had always had a lot of chakra, in fact finding his chakra had been the one thing he had been able to do before the other academy students. He simply had so much that he did not need to actually spend time looking for it, it was already right there. Once he felt it, he began to channel chakra to his ears. At first he winced, having channeled too much chakra and hurting his eardrums, as the various sounds of the world invaded them. But after a while he managed to find an appropriate balance of chakra. He listened to the different sounds of the forest, or training ground. He could hear several birds chirping and some animals that were scurrying around on the ground. He heard running water, so there was a pond or stream not too far from him. He sighed as he stopped meditating for a second. He knew that despite training this hard, he still had a long way to go before he could even match the strength and skill of the elite level shinobi out there. But hey, you get what you work for, not what you wish for. Successful people ain't gifted, they work hard, and then they succeed on purpose, so I should stop thinking and start working it was early morning, the sun hadn't even risen yet. But one Yuzumaki Naruto was already up and about, getting ready for his first day as a ninja. After a quick shower, and a somewhat decent breakfast of eggs and toast, Naruto was ready to start the day. He looked himself over in the mirror, checking his clothing and equipment to make sure everything looked good. He wanted every one of his classmates, former classmates he reminded himself, to leave with a good impression of him. Nodding to himself, the blonde genin left and began making his way towards the academy. He had decided to walk to the academy instead of roof hopping, even though he had come to enjoy the activity. There were not any people out at this time, being so early that the sun was just beginning to rise, so Naruto did not have to suffer through any glares this morning, and since it was so early he could afford to take his time. Naruto arrived at the academy and entered the classroom. He smiled as he saw his friends sitting in their seats. Satsuki wasn't in the class yet. He tapped Shikamaru up and gave Choji a fist bump. Naruto then sat beside Shikamaru and grinned broadly at him. So we're genin now. Naruto commented, making Shikamaru yawn. More troublesome work to do, everything about this is a drag. Shikamaru grumbled. Hey. I thought you promised me that you'll be my chief aide when I become Hokage one day. You better start putting in the hard work Shika, and I won't take no for an answer. We're shinobi now, if we're ill prepared we might die out there. And I won't take nobody else as my chief aide except for you, Shika. Naruto declared. Shikamaru put his hands up. Chill man, I was just joking. You know I don't break promises, especially one as serious as this. Shikamaru replied. Naruto nodded. I know that, but I'm just saying that you should really start working hard right now. The shinobi life is dangerous you know. Naruto replied. Choji nodded. You got it, Naruto. I'll work hard and get stronger so that I can protect my family and friends. Joji declared before munching on some chips. Shikamaru nodded before laying his head down on the table. 
Same here Naruto, but you can't stop me from being lazy from time to time. Shikamaru smirked at Naruto who smirked back at the Nara. I don't plan to, Shika. Hey. Naruto waved at Satsuki who only hummed back in response. Satsuki sat at a table right beside him. Which team do you think you'll be on? Naruto asked. Satsuki shrugged in response. How the hell should I know? The Hokage assigns the teams, not me. Besides, I don't think we'll be on the same team. Satsuki replied, confusing Naruto. Seeing his confusion, Satsuki decided to continue explaining. But I do know this, there's a thing called power balance. Each team was designed to be balanced with a specific format in mind. Satsuki explained. Naruto nodded and hummed. But hey, if we're not put in the same team, we're still gonna be friends right? Naruto asked while holding out his fist. Satsuki looked at it before snorting a little. I told you a thousand times already, we're not friends, and we will never be. Satsuki replied. Naruto stood up and glared at her. Really after all, we've been three or still acting like you have a stick in your ass, Naruto shouted at him. Satsuki glared back at him and stood up as well. I do not have a stick in my ass, loser. Satsuki shouted back. The two glared intensely at each other. Kiba gritted his teeth. Oi. Quit blocking my way, Naruto. Kiba shouted and pushed Naruto towards Satsuki's direction. Naruto widened his eyes as he got extremely close to Satsuki. Satsuki's eyes were as wide as possible, she tried to dodge and let the blonde fall on his face, but it was already too late. Chu him Satsuki's shrill shriek was muffled by Naruto's lips kissing her own. Naruto was kissing her. She wanted to back away and beat him up, but his grip on her lips was too enticing. Satsuki unconsciously kissed back. Naruto widened his eyes at the predicament he found himself in. He was kissing the Satsuki Achiha, the Ice Princess of Konoha. And it felt extremely intoxicating. Serves you right bastard. Kiba smirked at the scene before finding his own seat which was beside Shino Aburam. Shino is a shinobi of Kanahagakur's Aburam clan. Quiet, and at times off-putting to some, Shino puts his clan's insect-based techniques to use. The Aburam clan is one of the four noble clans of Kanahagakur. At birth, members of this clan are offered to several special breeds of insects as a nest, residing just under their host skin. These insects will then live in symbiosis with their host from that point on. Because of this, its members are characterized by their use of insects as weapons. The insects can leave and enter their host's body through various pores. They feed on chakra as a food source, making them quite deadly. The relationship between the shinobi and the insects is mutually beneficial. The host grants the insects shelter and allows them to feed off their chakra, their body becoming a living hive of tens of thousands of these insects, and in return the insects do the user's bidding, allowing the shinobi to perform ninjutsu-like techniques without the use of hand seals or chakra conversion. Shino is regularly seen sporting the same style as the rest of his clan, consisting of dark round sunglasses and a sea green jacket with a high, upturned collar. Shino is a fair-skinned man and the tallest member of his graduating class. He has dark bushy brown hair and dark sharp eyes. As with other members of his clan, Shino constantly keeps his eyes covered to others. Was that really necessary, Kiba? Shino asked Kiba who shrugged. Probably not, but the look on her fanboy's faces makes it very worth it. Kiba replied while having a dog-like grin on his face. Shino stayed silent while he looked at Satsuki's fanboys, who were utterly horrified at the scene they were witnessing. Naruto released the kiss with Satsuki, creating a string of saliva between their lips. They looked at each other and immediately became flustered. Their faces were redder than tomatoes, and Satsuki had steam rising from the top of her head. Everybody sit down, Haruka demanded as everyone quickly rushed to their seats, not wanting to earn their instructor's wrath. Haruka looked around and noticed that it was oddly quiet, only a few people huddled about whispering to each other. That's odd, I would have expected everyone to ignore my orders and continue jumping around and yelling their heads off at finally graduating. Haruka thought before looking at Naruto and Satsuki who had flustered expressions on their faces. What's up with them? Did they accidentally kiss in front of everyone or something? Iruka wondered before clearing his throat and beginning his speech. Congratulations to all of you for getting this far. You have finally taken your first steps as Shinobi and I couldn't be any prouder. Now before I announce the assignments we need to hand out Rookie and Kinoichi of the year. 
It would have been done sooner had there not been a tie. Kinoichi of the year has gone to Satsuki Acha. Sakura and Hinata were a very close second. Give it up for them everyone Aruka smiled as the class started clapping their hands and cheered up the three Kinoichi. And this year's Rookie of the Year goes to Yuzumaki Naruto Congrats. Aruka smiled proudly at Naruto as the class cheered louder. Hehehe <laughs> Naruto grinned sheepishly and scratched his head while having an embarrassed blush on his face. Aruka raised his hand, making the cheering die down. Aruka continued his speech after coughing awkwardly into his own hand. As of today you are no longer academy students, but full-fledged ninja. But in the ranks of ninja you all are only genin, the lowest ranking in the ninja hierarchy. However the first step has now been made, and your greatest challenges are now ahead of you. Haruka paused and pulled out a clipboard. For the next stage, U27 Genin will be assigned into three-man squads, with each squad being assigned a Jonin sensei who will supervise and continue to train you from here on out. Several students looked up with surprise etched on their faces as they heard they were being assigned into groups. Now then, the squads have been arranged to give each team a balance of abilities and skills. I will now read the roster, so pay attention to when your name is called and who you will be teamed up with. Iruka looked at his clipboard and began to call out names. Team 1 will be Naruto stop daydreaming about his first kiss with Sitsuki and began paying attention as the Genin squads were called, not wanting to miss who his teammates were. I seriously hope that I have friends like Shikamaru, Choji, Sakura-chan or heck, even Satsuki in my squad. If not it's gonna be very awkward as most of the class, especially the boys hate me for what happened just now. Team 7 under Kakashi Haddock will be Haruno Sakura, Ichiha Satsuki Sakura widened her eyes and looked at Satsuki, who also had her eyes widened. And Yuzumaki Naruto Aruka declared much to the shock of the two girls. Ino raised her hand. Sensei, I thought that you said the teams were balanced. How is putting the rookie in Kinoichi of the Year and also the runner-up for the Kinoichi of the Year title in the same team balanced? Ino asked him. By tradition Rookie of the Year, Kinoichi of the Year and the Dead Last are always placed on the same team. Luckily for us Haddock had actually wanted a specific team and made a formal request for this specific setup. The Hokage was skeptical as to the balance, but apparently Kakashi made a compelling argument. Aruka explained to her. Ino nodded in understanding. Sakura was surprised, their Jonin sensei specifically wanted them to be grouped together. Naruto and Satsuki were having the same question in their heads. Teammate under Yuhi Kurenai will be Hayuga Hinata, Inuzuka Kiba and Aburam Shino. Team 9 is still in circulation, and so Team 10 will be Yamanaka Ino, Akamichi Choji and Nara Shikamaru under Saratobi Asuma. Your Jonin senseis should be here after lunch, after lunch Naruto, Sakura and Satsuki were the only ones in the class. Everyone had left as their Jonin senseis had already picked them up. It's been an hour already. Everyone including Aruka sensei is gone. What kind of Jonin is late? What if there's an important battle ongoing and he's late when others need his help? Sakura grumbled in annoyance as Naruto sighed and palmed his face. Well, if we're gonna sit here and complain. We can find something to do in the meantime. You two get on my back while I do push-ups. Naruto decided, making the two girls look at him weirdly. Was I not supposed to say that? Naruto asked nervously. Sakura imagined what it will be like, her sitting on Naruto's back while he does push-ups. She blushed and quickly shook that thought away. Satsuki still hasn't gotten over her first kiss she had with Naruto. She blushed in embarrassment and frustration and covered her face. Naruto held up a scroll. Well, while I do push-ups, you two can focus on this basic chakra control exercise I found in the Kanoha library while sitting on my back. Naruto suggested as Sakura grabbed the scroll. Satsuki sat closer to her and they read it together. Leaf floating exercise. This sounds useful, let's do it. Kakashi was humming a cheerful tune as he walked through the corridor. He stopped in front of a door and opened it. He found himself witnessing an interesting scene. He immediately noticed Naruto who was performing one-handed push-ups. He looked at the two girls sitting on top of him undisturbed about his constant movement while performing what seemed like the leaf floating exercise. Yep, I made the right choice choosing these three. But I need to know if they are able to work together before I fully accept them. And it seems like Naruto here is a bit of a Casanova. Lucky bastard. Bakashi thought before clearing his throat, surprising the three genin. 
Satsuki and Sakura quickly got off Naruto and stopping practicing the leaf floating exercise. Naruto quickly got up and grinned apologetically at Kakashi. Hello Kakashi sensei. Sorry for not noticing your presence. Sakura apologized to him. Kakashi waved it off. Meh, it's fine him. Kakashi replied before humming and rubbing his chin. How can I say this my first impression of you three as you guys are interesting. Meet me at the rooftop in one minute. Kakashi requested before disappearing with a body flicker jutsu. Team 7 looked at each other for a few seconds before they started rushing towards the rooftop, while molding chakra into their legs to boost their running speed. Kakashi who was sitting on a railing built on the edge of the building which reading his Icha Icha Paradise novel, looked up to see the door to the rooftop opening. Team 7 walked towards him and sat down. They looked at him, expecting him to talk. Kakashi closed his adult novel. Okay, let's begin with some introductions so that we get to know each other better. Let me start first. So I am Hada Kakashi, my likes are numerous, and my dislikes are numerous too. My hobbies well despite being officially adults now, you are still far too young for that. As for my hopes and dreams for the future, those are to see you become the best shinobi that you possibly can be. Kakashi explained, making the trio sweat drop. Well, at least that's a start. Sakura whispered as Kakashi looked at her, expecting her to start introducing herself. Sakura cleared her throat before nodding to herself. My name's Sakura Haruno. I like working at the Konoha Hospital. I dislike people who judge people based on appearance and not in skill. My hobbies are making medicinal salves, and my dream for the future is to become the best medic nin in the whole world, better than Lady Tsunade. Sakura introduced herself with a determined tone. Kakashi nodded and looked at Satsuki. Satsuki Acha. My likes are limited to training with these two and tomatoes. My dislikes are far too numerous to count, but do include a certain man and people who give up and accept the crappy situation they're in. My hobbies are training to get stronger, and my dream is avenge the Achiha clan, and to make sure this idiot sitting to my left doesn't get himself killed on his journey to become Hokage. Satsuki stated flatly. Kakashi raised an eyebrow at the conviction he had heard at the end, but looked onto the final genin. Naruto was staring back at him with all the confidence in the world. My name is Yuzumaki Naruto. I like training with Satsuki and Sakura-chan, playing shogi with Shikamaru and Raymond. I dislike waiting for the three minutes it takes for Raymond to be cooked and arrogant fools who can't tell the difference between a kunai and a scroll it's sealed into. Naruto scowled deeply after mentioning that. Kakashi narrowed his eyes at him. The other two genin just looked at him oddly. I had been told by Lord Third that he knew of his tenant, it seems he's taken a disliking of people who can't see past their hatred. I hope this doesn't become a problem. Kakashi thought while resisting a sigh. My dreams for the future is to become Hokage, surpass the previous ones, and earn recognition and respect from the villagers of Konoha, by becoming the most powerful shinobi in the world, Naruto declared with a foxy grin on his face. Sakura smiled at him while Satsuki smirked a little at Naruto's bold claims, that is exactly what he would say after all. Kakashi nodded at Naruto's words. From what I can tell, they are already friends and are supporting each other's dreams. Their next task should be a sight to see. Kakashi thought before crossing his arms. Alright, that's enough of that. We will start our duties tomorrow. But first we are going to do something with just the four of us. Kakashi revealed, gaining the three genin's full interest. Survival training, but I'm your opponent. Before I go any further, this isn't going to be some simple exercise. It is nothing like your training at the academy. Kakashi warned with a smirk under his mask. Naruto raised an eyebrow at Kakashi. Then what kind of training is it? He asked, Kakashi began to chuckle, causing the three students to give him odd looks full of confusion. Hey, that was a normal question sensei, what's so funny? Sakura asked while clenching her fists. Well, if I told you, you chicken out. Kakashi replied. Naruto glared at him. Just try us. Kakashi got serious. Oh don't worry, I will. Of the 27 graduates that made it this far, only 9 will actually be accepted as genin. The other 18 will be weeded out and sent back to the academy. In other words, this is a make-it-or-break-it-pass-fail test, with the chances of passing being at least 66%. Kakashi revealed. 
The three genin remained silent after this revelation, but Kakashi could tell from their body language that they were nervous about it. Then what was that test we took at the academy all about, sensei? Sakura asked with a frown on her face. Kakashi shrugged. Oh that. That was simply to weed out the hopeless cases. The ones that pass that test are the ones who have the potential to become genin. I'm the one who gets to decide whether you three pass or fail. Be a training ground three at 5 a.m. Bring all your gear and weapons. And I would suggest not eating breakfast tomorrow morning. Kakashi explained to them. The three genin were confused about Kakashi's last sentence. Cause you'll just throw it up. Kakashi added, noticing their confusion before disappearing in a puff of smoke. That's kinda stupid, isn't breakfast the most important meal of the day? Is that guy seriously telling us to fight him on an empty stomach? Naruto wondered. Sakura hummed. It's probably a lie, but we can't be 100% sure. Shinobi are masters of deception. What if he's just telling us that to make us think he's lying? Sakura offered her two cents. You're probably overthinking it, Sakura. We need a plan to beat him, there's no way we can beat a jonin out of all people. Satsuki muttered. Naruto sighed and laid down on the ground. Yeah, but we know next to nothing about him. Sakura groaned. Satsuki shrugged. That's the reality, Sakura. Why would Shinobi have show their trump cards? Satsuki mumbled, making the pink-haired beauty sigh. Silence followed. You know, we could just ask around. Naruto suggested, breaking the silence. Sakura tilted her head. You really think everyone knows Kakashi Sensei's abilities? Sakura asked him. Ask the Jonin Senseis. Yeah I know, but where would they be? I'm not running around the village just to have the chance of getting nothing from them. Sakura argued. Well there goes that idea. Naruto grumbled. Satsuki shook her head. You guys are seriously overthinking this. He wouldn't go all out on Genins, it's like bringing an army to kill bandits. Let's just go back, get ready, meet up tomorrow and discuss our game plan. Is that okay with you too? Satsuki asked while looking at Naruto and Sakura who nodded back at her. Yeah, see you girls tomorrow. Naruto grinned at them before using the body flicker jutsu to disappear. Sakura waved at Satsuki. Bye Satsuki. HN. Sakura used the body flicker jutsu to disappear too, leaving Satsuki all alone. Satsuki looked up at the clear blue sky, spotting a hawk in the process. I'm one step closer to killing you, Itachi. You'll regret saying those words to me on that day. How tall am I? Naruto asked his shadow clone who was measuring his height with a measuring tape. 160.02 centimeters, 5'3 basically. His clone replied. Naruto smirked before dispelling his clone. He looked at the bathroom mirror in front of him. His body's physique is lean and full of muscles, but not to a horrifying degree. It was enough to make girls admire it with a blush on their faces. Naruto had went from the skinny malnutrition kid to this piece of art. He ate healthier meals and trained. Naruto had also theorized that the Kaiubi had some hand in fixing his body, when it had the necessary nutrients to increase his physical growth. It was true, but Naruto didn't know it. It was in fact the Kaiubi's chakra that was increasing his growth rate. Because he had been unable to get a decent meal from anywhere except Ichiraku Raymond, and their food was not healthy in the least, nearly half of the chakra circulating through the seal and into his body, went into keeping his body as healthy as possible, with a little amount of nutrients it had. When Naruto was eating a decent mix of carbs, proteins and fats, when he had a decent income doing deliveries for Hiruzen and selling sealing scrolls and exploding tags to weapon stores, the Kaiubi's chakra had more to work with, thus allowing it to increase his body's strength and physical attributes more easily. Naruto walked into the kitchen as he finished dressing in his shinobi attire and tying on his headband. He sat down at his table as another shadow clone served him breakfast, grumbling about lazy ass originals before dispelling. Grabbing a fork Naruto began to eat, scrambled eggs with a side of bacon, toast and orange juice, just about the only thing he could make that didn't taste like crap at the moment. Morning you two. Naruto smiled at Satsuki and Sakura as he arrived at training ground three. Sakura smiled and greeted him back while Satsuki nodded at him. Naruto studied the training ground they were going to be fighting Kakashi in. Training ground 3 is a portion of land located inside of Konoha. There is a view of mountains in the landscape and a large and deep river with forests in the both of its sides. 
There is a glade and in its center there are three stumps lined side by side. Let's get started. I think we can have the advantage if we lay traps around the place. Not too much or else we'll get caught in them. Naruto suggested. Satsuki nodded. You go do that. You're the expert in it after all. Satsuki replied as Naruto quickly held up his hands and crossed his index and middle fingers. Shadow Clone Jutsu. Naruto declared, multiple plumes of smoke surrounded him as Naruto created five shadow clones who immediately rushed off and started laying traps around the training ground. Satsuki raised a brow at him. Since when can you do that? Satsuki asked him. Naruto grinned at her. One week ago. It's a long story. Why are you asking, are you jealous or something? Naruto asked with a teasing tone. Satsuki scowled at him. Don't try me, idiot. I still haven't beat your ass for kissing me the other day. Satsuki argued back. Sakura blushed, remembering the intimate scene her two teammates shared. I told you already. Kiba pushed me. And you couldn't react fast enough to get out of the way, same goes for you, bastard. You didn't even try. It's like you wanted me to kiss you or something I did not a few hours later using the body flicker jutsu, Kakashi appeared in training ground 7, and saw that the three genin he was going to test sitting on the ground silently. They all collectively deadpanned at him. You're late. The three flatly stated in unison. Kakashi smiled under the mask. Sorry kids, I got lost in the road of life. That damn road has so many twists and turns, it reminds me of a roller coaster. Kakashi replied nonchalantly, making the three sigh in defeat. The jonin then reached into his pouch and pulled out a clock which he set on the training post in the middle. Reaching back into his pouch he pulled out two bells, which he attached to his pants, and then pulled out two bento boxes. Now then, I am sure you're all wondering about your test. Kakashi paused for a moment as he gave them an eye smile. The test is simple, you have to get these two bells from me. Those who don't get a bell will be sent back to the academy for remedial training. The trio widened their eyes in shock, making Kakashi laugh evilly in his mind. One of you will fail. And also, whoever doesn't get a bell will also be tied to one of these posts, and will be forced to watch as the others eat their meals in front of you. Kakashi added, expecting a reaction from the three. He then noticed that the kids didn't have hungry expressions on their faces. Hmm. They actually ate breakfast. I seriously underestimated how smart these kids are. Kakashi thought as Sakura smiled at him. You only suggested that we don't eat, Sensei. Considering if we didn't eat we wouldn't have the energy to fight you, it would be better if we just ate. Sakura explained. Hum I suppose I did. Kakashi said, deciding to let the situation slide. Now then, you can use kunai and shuriken, remember to come at me with the intention to kill, or you won't get a bell. Kakashi advised them seriously. The trio nodded at him, quickly donning serious expressions. Kakashi looked at the three before nodding to himself, deciding to start the test. Now then, ready, set, go. As soon as Kakashi started the test, the three genin shot off, disappearing into the grove of trees using the body flicker jutsu. Kakashi noticed that the trio disappeared into the same direction at the same time. He widened his eyes a little. Could it be? Did they already figure out the true nature of this test? Kakashi wondered. Naruto, Satsuki and Sakura were crouching together while hiding in a bush. They were staring at Kakashi intensely. Hey, have you guys ever heard of a three-man squad before? Naruto asked them. Sakura shook her head. No, a squad always has three genin and a jonin sensei. It's been like this since forever. Sakura answered. Here's a theory, what if he's trying to divide us so we'll fight over who gets the bells? Satsuki wondered. Naruto shook his head. Well, I'm not doing that. That shit's for children. We're shinobi, meaning that we're considered adults so we should act like one. Naruto replied maturely. The two girls weren't surprised at Naruto's sudden maturity, Naruto can be mature when the situation calls for it. We should work together. We have a better chance of obtaining the bells that way. Sakura decided. No one argued with her plan. Naruto's sweat dropped as he saw Kakashi take out his adult novel and start reading it. That guy has no shame. Even I wouldn't read it out in the open. He grumbled. Read what, Naruto? Satsuki asked him. Naruto shook his head. Nothing, Satsuki. Hazy Jinjutsu. Kakashi widened his eyes as his vision was suddenly blurred dramatically. 
In addition, it caused him to react as though he's sinking in quicksand, effectively immobilizing him. Kai Kakashi shouted while clapping his hands together, quickly releasing the Jinjutsu. He looked up and saw Naruto and Satsuki standing in front of him while Sakura stood at the back. So she casted it, buying time for those two to get down. Kakashi thought, noticing Sakura holding the tiger hand seal. Naruto threw a kunai at Kakashi who jumped back casually to dodge it. Suddenly, the kunai Naruto threw was engulfed in a plume of smoke. The smoke quickly cleared, revealing that it was a shadow clone of Naruto who transformed itself into a kunai. The Naruto clone threw a kunai that had an explosive tag attached to it via string. Kakashi smiled a little at Naruto's cleverness before he used the substitution jutsu without hand seals. He was replaced by a tree stump. The flying kunai stuck to the tree stump, and a loud explosion followed. Boom. The three genin got closer to each other in a triangle formation, not letting their guard down one bit. Where is he? Sakura whispered as Kakashi hasn't showed himself in a minute now. Satsuki looked around. Above. No. In the forest. No. Satsuki widened her eyes as she realized where Kakashi was when she felt a hand grab her right leg. Below you. Earth style. Headhunter Jutsu. Satsuki grunted as she was dragged into the earth, leaving only her head above the surface. The Ichiha looked to see that Naruto and Sakura fell into the same fate as her. Three Kakashi suddenly appeared in front of them. Two of them disappeared in a plume of smoke, revealing that Kakashi had used the Shadow Clone Jutsu too. Kakashi smirked under his mask as the three genin glared at him. Is that all you three got? What a disappointment. Kakashi commented and raised an eyebrow as the three genin suddenly smirked at him. Poof. Naruto, Satsuki and Sakura disappeared in plumes of white smoke, revealing that Kakashi had been dealing with shadow clones all this time. Kakashi chuckled as he put his Icha Icha novel back into his hip pouch. He looked at the three empty holes which was previously filled with the three genin. Not bad, Naruto. I should have expected you to use this tactic. Now, what are you and your teammates planning? In a bush okay, so he can use Earth style. Should I send another group in to test if he has other elemental affinities? Naruto asked his teammates. Satsuki shook her head. No, it's a waste of our time. We need to get the bells before time runs out or else we all fail. Satsuki replied seriously while Sakura cracked her knuckles. Naruto smirked. So we're all charging in then. Why don't you start us off, Satsuki? Naruto asked. Satsuki nodded before weaving through some hand seals. She completed them in a blur. Fire style. Fireball jutsu. Satsuki declared before expelling a large fireball from her mouth. Kakashi turned to look at the fireball coming his way. He quickly molded chakra into his leg and jumped backwards from the incoming fireball. The fireball exploded on the place where he was previously standing. Satsuki leaped out of her hiding spot and continued to spit out multiple fireballs of the same size as Kakashi, who continuously jumped away from them. Kakashi landed under a tree and looked at Satsuki who landed in front of him. Impressive, to be able to perform a C-rank jutsu multiple times without getting tired. Kakashi commented. Satsuki rolled her eyes. You should shut up and focus on the fight, Kakashi-sensei. Oh. But I am focused Wo Kakashi yelled as he was suddenly upside down. He looked to see his legs tied up by a rope which was hanging from a tree. Bleh. Naruto who was standing on the tree Kakashi was hanging on stuck out his tongue playfully at him. Shanro Kakashi widened his eyes as he saw Sakura diving towards him while stretching her hand out, intending to grab the bells tied onto his waist. Kakashi used the substitution jutsu again and replaced himself with another tree stump. Sakura widened her eyes and crashed into the tree forehead first. Ao Sakura quickly recovered and hissed at the pain she was feeling on her forehead. Kakashi appeared far away from the three genin, while giving them an eye smile. Very good teamwork, you three. But it's still not enough. You need to do better than that. Kakashi taunted them with a cheerful tone. Naruto landed beside his teammates and cracked his knuckles. And you need to be more cautious of your surroundings, Kakashi-sensei. Naruto replied confidently, making Kakashi raise an eyebrow at him. Now Naruto shouted as ten of his clones leaped out of the river behind Kakashi. Kakashi quickly turned around to look at the clones diving towards him with kunai in their hands. The leading Naruto clone dove towards Kakashi, intending to perform a diving headbutt. 
Kakashi raised his hands to block the attack. The clone slammed into Kakashi's hands which were making an X shape to block it. Bomb. Kakashi quickly punched the clone in the face, dispelling it. The real Naruto flinched a little when he received the memories of said clone. Even though he didn't feel the pain, it looked very painful. Kakashi proceeded to quickly deal with the rest of the shadow clones. One clone tried to kick him which Kakashi ducked under, however another Naruto tried to knee him in the face. Kakashi blocked it, but was surprised at the clone's coordination. He only had this jutsu for a week, but he's that good with it. Must be Minato-sensei's talent and Kashina-sen's innovative mindset. Kakashi thought before managing to dodge a knee, punch, elbow combo from another Naruto. Another Naruto came at Kakashi from his blind side, attempting to steal the bells, but Kakashi heard the bells jingle when the clone Naruto got a finger on them. He grabbed onto the Naruto behind him, forcing him in front as the other Naruto launched a punch at him. There was a poof of smoke as Naruto ended up hitting his clone. Damn. Naruto whispered while opening his shuriken holster. Satsuki performed a couple of hand seals while Sakura charged in, joining the clones in fighting Kakashi. Satsuki clapped her hands together as she finished performing her hand seal necessary for her jutsu. Fire style. Multiple fire bullets Satsuki shit out multiple flaming bullets at Kakashi, who was caught off guard by the sudden attack, after dispelling the last of Naruto's shadow clones. Kakashi weaved through hand seals at blinding speeds. Tiger, hare, boar, ram, dog, ox and lastly snake. He then quickly placed his hands on the ground. Earth style. Mud wall a featureless mud wall appeared in front of him, blocking the flaming bullets. Some minor explosions happened with the flaming bullets destroyed the mud wall a little. It also created a bunch of smoke, blocking Kakashi's vision at the same time. Kakashi narrowed his eyes as he heard footsteps approaching him. He looked to his right to see something penetrating the smoke. It wasn't a person, but just a kunai. The diversion worked as someone appeared behind Kakashi. Take this cherry blossom impact Shanro by him. Kakashi grunted as he turned to look at who it was and was punched in the face by Sakura. Her punch was so powerful he slammed into the mud wall he created. Sakura grinned as she attempted to snatch the bells from Kakashi. But she widened her eyes as another Kakashi shot out of the ground in front of her and grabbed her hand, stopping her from doing so. You have one hell of a punch, Sakura. If you enhanced it with chakra, my jaw would be broken. Kakashi commented while Sakura was being held down by the other Kakashi. Using the body flicker jutsu, Naruto appeared in front of the Kakashi clone and stabbed a kunai into the clone's heart, dispelling it and releasing Sakura from its grasp. Satsuki appeared beside Sakura and they all entered combat stances while looking at Kakashi with determined expressions. I must say, for a genin fresh out of the academy, you three fight like experienced chunin. I appreciate it, but flattery won't get you nowhere, Kakashi-sensei. Naruto replied with a grin on his face. Oh don't get me wrong kids, you still suck individually. Kakashi added as tick marks appeared on the three genin's foreheads. At least we make up for it by working together, right guys? Naruto asked his teammates who nodded back at him. Let's do this. We still got time. Naruto declared before raising a kunai that made Kakashi widen his eyes in shock. Where did he even get that? Kakashi whispered as he recognized the unique kunai Naruto was holding. He recognized them all too well. Naruto was holding the Flying Thunder God kunai, which are custom-made kunai and signature tools of Minato Namikas, who uses them in conjunction with his space-time ninjutsu. The Flying Thunder God technique. They differ from a standard kunai in that they have three blades instead of one, and the handle, which is thicker than normal, serves as the marker for Minato's teleportation ability. Minato also said that these blades are a bit heavier than a normal kunai. Their prongs also make them more deadly in melee fighting. There's no way he can already do that jutsu. Kakashi mused as Naruto threw the three-pronged kunai at Kakashi, who watched as it slowly advanced towards him. Suddenly, Naruto appeared right beside the kunai and grabbed it while it was still flying, and slashed it repeatedly at Kakashi who dodged them all. Another Naruto charged towards Kakashi and leaped up to throw a kick at him. Kakashi grabbed the foot, blocking it. Naruto immediately followed up his combo with a punch and another kick from the opposite leg. Kakashi blocked them all easily, he stared into the clone's eyes. Suddenly, the clone grinned as his eyes turned into the Sharingan, shocking Kakashi. Jinjutsu. Sharingan. 
Naruto who was really Satsuki using the transformation jutsu, used a jinjutsu on Kakashi with her one Tomo Sharingan, causing instantaneous but temporary paralysis in him. Go go go. Naruto shouted as the ten shadow clones he created all held down Kakashi. Sakura using the body flicker jutsu, quickly appeared in front of him and reached for the bells. Kakashi who already broke out of the jinjutsu, used his strength to release himself from the clone's tight hold on him. He quickly dealt with them and turned around to look at the three genin who were looking at him with a serious expression. Kring. Damn Sakura whispered as she looked at the clock that was ringing repeatedly. Naruto huffed and crossed his arms while Satsuki looked away. Kakashi gave them an eye smile. Well, it was a valiant effort, but in the end it was all for nothing. You three didn't get a bell, so all three of you failed the test and will be sent back to the academy for remedial classes together. Kakashi stated. Naruto raised an eyebrow at him and smirked at him. Really? Did we though? Check again, Kakashi-sensei. Naruto had a large fox-like grin as he held up his right hand, revealing the two bells he was holding. He jingled them in front of a shocked Kakashi who looked at the place where he tied the bells. Huh? Kakashi widened his eyes as he saw two small leaves replacing the bells. He looked back at Naruto for an explanation. It was when you were being held down by my clones. I had Sakura pretend to reach for it, while one of the clones holding you down replaced the bells with those leaves. Naruto explained. Kakashi nodded, impressed that the blonde was able to come up with a plan that quickly. That is to be expected, he is Sensei's son, after all. Kakashi thought before looking at Naruto. Well done Naruto. Now however, you need to decide who to give the bells to. After all, only two of you can pass. Choose wisely, Naruto. Kakashi explained while looking into Naruto's bright blue eyes. Naruto smiled as he tossed a bell at Satsuki and the other to Sakura. An extra year couldn't hurt. Naruto shrugged as the other two looked at him with an expression of pure disbelief. You idiot Sakura shouted before bonking him angrily on the head. Satsuki snorted before throwing the bell back at him. You got the bells idiot, not me. And I refuse to accept charity from you. Satsuki replied seriously. Sakura nodded before giving the bells back to Naruto. You girls need to relax. I have a way to make sure we all pass. Naruto revealed, making the two girls raise an eyebrow at him. Everyone watched as Naruto reached into his pouch and pulled out a little orange book. I made sure to get some added insurance. Naruto turned to look at a wide-eyed Kakashi and grinned. Either you pass all of us, or I'll have Satsuki show you what a fireball jutsu can do to paperback no, not the precious don't worry, you're safe now precious. Kakashi mumbled while lovingly nuzzling the book against his cheek. The three genin sweat dropped and looked at him weirdly. Uh sensei. You're kinda freaking me out here. You're even weirder than that abyssu dude when it comes to this book. Naruto called Kakashi, a little uncomfortable with the awkward scene before him. Kakashi coughed as he stood back up, pocketing the book and acting as if he had not just been snuggling a book, as one normally would a lover. Sorry about that, kids. I guess all of you passed then, you can thank Naruto for that. But do you three know the true nature of this exam? Kakashi asked them. The three genin looked at him with confusion evident on their faces. Are you telling me this test is all about teamwork? Cause it seemed like it from the start. Naruto asked him. Kakashi nodded. Correct Naruto. The purpose is to see whether you three could forget about your personal interests and successfully work together under these design circumstances. The duties are done by the team. Of course superior individual ability is important to a ninja, but what's even more important than that is teamwork. Individual play that disrupts the team can put your comrades in danger and can even get you killed in the battlefield. Kakashi started walking towards the memorial stone. The Memorial Stone is a monument in Kanahagakur listing all the ninja who died in service to the village. It looked like a kunai-shaped structure. Look at these numerous names carved onto the stone. They are shinobi recognized as heroes of Konoha. They are all heroes who are killed in action. The fourth's name is carved on here. My best friend's name is carved on here too. Kakashi muttered while putting a hand on the Memorial Stone. He closed his eyes and paid his respects to the fallen. He turned back to his students. You kids are the first genin team that I've ever passed and put under my tutelage. Everyone else would just do whatever I told them, they were all just morons. A ninja must see underneath the underneath. 
Those who break the rules and codes of the ninja world are scum, that's true Kakashi stayed silent before looking up at the sky. But you know what? Those who abandon their friends are worse than scum. Kakashi gave them a thumbs up. That ends the training. All of you pass starting tomorrow Team 7 will begin its duties. But before I go Kakashi looked at them. You know, I was expecting you guys to completely miss the point of this test. It seems I underestimated how close you three are with each other. Kakashi commented. Naruto grinned as he wrapped one of his arms around Sakura while the other around Satsuki. He pulled them in as he grinned broadly at Kakashi. These two are the best believe it without them by my side, I would still be a loser right now. Naruto declared. Sakura blushed and smiled happily at Naruto, while Satsuki blushed and started grumbling. Kakashi chuckled to himself. Well, that concludes today's meeting, see you kids tomorrow. Meet me tomorrow over at the bridge at 8am so that we can begin our first mission. Kakashi requested. Will you be late again? Sakura asked him. Kakashi looked back at her and gave her an eye smile. I won't. I'm not gonna neglect my duties as a teacher to you three. My neglecting means better chances of you three dying and I'm not letting that happen. That's a promise, Sakura. Kakashi replied before using the body flicker jutsu to disappear from their sights. Naruto looked at the girls. Well, let's go celebrate. I suggest to Chiraku Raymond. Naruto decided, making his two teammates side. Naruto, you know that it's extremely unhealthy to frequent that place right? Sakura asked him. Naruto pouted. But we haven't had it in a long time. He whined. Satsuki narrowed her eyes at him. It's only been two days since we went there Naruto. Satsuki argued with him, making Naruto slump down in defeat. Sakura giggled before patting Naruto's back to console him. There there Naruto. Don't be so mean to him, Satsuki. Sakura scolded while glaring at Yachiha. Satsuki just shrugged in response. I think we can make an exception, Naruto. We just did something big in our lives, celebratory Raymond should do just fine. Yeah you're the best Sakura-chan, I know I am. Believe it hey. You just copied my thing. Oh, sorry he. Here is inside to himself as he saw that Kakashi was still not here. Why don't you all start, Kakashi will probably be several hours late anyway. Saratobi motioned for the Jonin in his office to begin talking. Someone stepped forward. He was Genma Shiranyui, a Takubetsu Jonin of an elite bodyguard to the Hokage. Takubetsu Jonin are ninja who, rather than having all-around Jonin skills, only excel in a specific area, much like warrant officers in real-world militaries. They nevertheless possess enough skill overall, as they are known to have been given the same opportunity as Jonin in leading their own Jonin teams. Genma has brown, shoulder-length hair which hangs about his face and brown eyes. He wears his forehead protector like a bandana, and the standard Jonin outfit, and always has his trademark senbin in his mouth. Lord Hokage, Team 1 has failed. Genma reported as Hiruzen nodded. A second one stepped up and stood beside Genma. He is Aoba Yamashiro, and he is also a Takubetsu Jonin like Genma. Aoba has dark, spiky hair, and is always seen wearing red framed sunglasses which obscures his eyes. He wears the standard Konoha Shinobi outfit complete with flak jacket and forehead protector, the latter of which is worn slightly tilted to the left. Team 2 failed as well. They simply don't understand the principles of teamwork. Aoba reported. On this went as teams 3 through 6 failed as well. Go on Kurinai-san, since Kakashi isn't here yet. Here is in gestured as Kurinai stepped up. Teammate passed. She reported. Asuma went after her, taking a puff of his cigarette. Team 10 passed as well. He took a step back as a puff of smoke erupted in the room. Sorry I'm late, a black cat crossed my path, so I had to take the long way around. Kakashi apologized as he appeared from within the smoke. Several groans were heard at Kakashi's terrible excuse. You would think a ninja as famous as Kakashi would, at the very least, be able to come up with more plausible excuses. Here is inside as he shook off his annoyance. Just give me your report, Kakashi. He grumbled. Team 7 passed. Kakashi said with a shrug. For a moment there was such a complete silence that one would almost think they had walked into a grave. Not even the crickets chirped as everyone stared at the Cyclopean Jonin with wide eyes and gaping mouths. Kakashi noticed the looks he was receiving and sweat dropped. What? I'm not that bad am I? He asked them. Yes. 
Everyone including Hiruzen replied in unison, causing Kakashi to rub the back of his head sheepishly. Hiruzen chuckled. Very well then. All of you are dismissed. He ordered them. One by one the jonin began to leave in their own unique way, from using the body flicker jutsu, to simply walking out the door. However, Kakashi stayed where he was. Hiruzen raised an eyebrow at him. I take it there is something you still wish to discuss, Kakashi. Hiruzen asked while talking out his smoking pipe from a drawer. I may be overstretching it, but I think my team might be the next pillars of Konoha. Each one of them has so much potential it's practically endless. Kakashi stated confidently. Hiruzen hummed softly. You might be right, Kakashi. Naruto is the Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi, is very good at Fuenjutsu, the Shadow Clone Jutsu, and many other aspects of the Shinobi arts, Satsuki is a talented Ichiha who is very good at her clan's fire style Jutsu, and is the same as Naruto minus the Fuenjutsu and Jinchuriki part. Sakura is a genius at chakra control. She's also talented at Jinjutsu and very good at medical ninjutsu and being a medic as a whole. Reports about her work in the Kanoha hospital support what I just said. Hiruzen supported Kakashi's statement. I really need to question the competence of the academy staff. Why do they not notice how talented these kids are? I mean come on flower pressing classes. Why not include advanced chakra control lessons such as tree and water walking, so that we senseis can focus on teaching them other stuff like nature transformations, rather than waste time focusing on these things? Kakashi asked him. Hiruzen shook his head. You would have to blame the civilian council on that. They think that since there is no more war, they can reduce the quality of the academy. I tried to keep it in Kakashi, but but the elders gave the okay before I had a say in it. If Minato were here, they would cower under his presence. Hiruzen muttered before looking at Minato's portrait. I have no doubt about it. But I do think you should be stricter when it comes to the council. You can take their advice and opinions to mind, but you have the final say in things. After all, the Kanoha Council only exists to help you, the Hokage govern the village. Sorry if I'm stepping out of line here. Kakashi muttered. Hiruzen shook his head. No no, you don't need to apologize for that. Because you're right, I am getting softer these days. Hiruzen muttered sadly. Uh. I shouldn't disturb you for much longer, Lord Third. Oh and one last thing Kakashi stopped and turned around to look at Hiruzen one last time before leaving the office. The Shadow Clone Jutsu should help decrease your workload sir. It worked for Minato-sensei, so it should do wonders for you. Kakashi advised before exiting the office and closing the door behind him. Hiruzen stayed silent for a while before groaning and angrily slamming his face onto his desk. Goddammit Kakashi was looking at the memorial stone in front of him. It was a few minutes before he needed to meet up with the three genin. Kakashi spends much of his free time at the monument, because his former comrade, Abito Ichiha, has his name engraved there. Hey Abito. It's me again. I finally passed a genin team. If you were here, you would definitely like them. Naruto, he's just like you you know. Satsuki acts just like me when I was younger, and Sakura is just like Rin. Kakashi whispered silently. He didn't get any reply. I hope you watching from above, Abito. I will protect them, even if it costs me my life. As you said, those who abandon their friends are worse than scum. Kakashi shook his head. The council wants me to train Satsuki because she is in Achiha. They want me because of the gift you gave me. Kakashi whispered before touching the his forehead protector that was covering his left eye. Actually, it's the whole reason I was selected for this squad in the first place. You already know that I do not approve of favoritism, I know that the council will not let this go, and I'm pretty sure Lord Third has no desire to listen to pointless bickering. I requested Naruto and Sakura before Lord Third could make his final decision. I requested Naruto because his skill, rivalry with Satsuki, and also because he is Sensei's son. I requested Sakura because she's a genius in chakra control, medical ninjutsu, and she's a good fighter too. Kakashi then narrowed his eyes. However, the council wants me to neglect Naruto's and Sakura's training in favor of Satsuki's. I have no intention of doing that. They can nag me all they want, I am not decreasing their chances of surviving in this depressing world we live in. Kakashi sighed before checking his watch. Ah, it's almost time to meet my three cute genin. See ya Bido. Don't get too lonely without me. Well, would you look at that. He's actually early today. 
Naruto grinned at Kakashi who chuckled. Good morning to you too, Naruto. You too, Satsuki and Sakura. Kakashi greeted them all. Sakura smiled back while Satsuki nodded back at the Jonin. Well, it's time to do what Jen and Tendo best. D-Rank Missions. Follow me to the mission assignment desk everyone. Kakashi ordered as the three genin started following his lead. The mission assignment desk is located within the Ninja Academy, where Shinobi go to in order to receive most of their missions from the Hokage. Kakashi sensei, I've only heard rumors, but what are D-Rank missions actually like? Sakura asked while Kakashi was reading his adult novel. The lowest levels of hell. Kakashi replied to her, sending chills down her spine. Naruto pulled out another weed, throwing it onto a growing pile beside him. He looked over at his teammates, who were both doing the same thing, then over to Kakashi, who was reading his adult novel. He sighed and looked at his clone who was doing the same. Kakashi only allowed him to create one clone for this mission. Naruto wasn't disappointed or embarrassed about this, after all it was what all Genin went through. Kakashi also shared his experiences doing D-Rank missions on the way. Good job team. Let's report our success back to Lord Hokage. Kakashi said, snapping his book shut as they finished their task. These aren't missions, they're chores. Satsuki grumbled. Chores that every single genin go through, Satsuki. You need to find something enjoyable in all of this. Do you feel satisfaction when you finished your work? Kakashi asked her. Satsuki sighed. Maybe a little, but it doesn't fit us at all. It's humiliating. We're shinobi, we're supposed to be out there fighting, not doing these chores that these villagers could easily complete on their own. Satsuki replied. Well look at the bright side, at least we get paid for our services. That doesn't mean I enjoy doing it though. Sakura grumbled. Naruto suddenly had a devious grin on his face. Hey, I have something that can make this interesting. Let's break the record for how many D-Rank missions a genin team has done. Naruto suggested. Kakashi raised an eyebrow at his suggestion. That sounds kinda fun. Sakura mumbled, making Naruto grin at her, let's do it. Satsuki agreed to Naruto's suggestion. Kakashi was surprised, he thought Satsuki would be the one to argue with Naruto. These missions unworthy of our time could count as stamina and physical training. Satsuki explained. Naruto grinned and nodded. Alright. Let's go back to the mission desk quickly, Naruto declared before he and his teammates made a run for it. Akashi chuckled before picking up his pace. That morning and a little bit of afternoon, Team 7 performed a total of 15 D-Rank missions, setting a new record of D-Rank missions being done in a day. Hiruzen chuckled to himself as Team 7 returned to the mission assignment desk for the 16th time today. Hello again, Kakashi. Do you need another mission? Hiruzen asked Kakashi who shook his head before taking out the mission scroll with a signature from the person who paid for this mission on it. He gave it to Hiruzen. Nah, I think 15 is enough for one day. Kakashi replied as Naruto groaned. Satsuki and Sakura had disappointment clear on their faces. Aw oh man well, it'll be 16 tomorrow. Believe it. Naruto declared, making Kakashi sigh and Hiruzen laugh a little. Excellent, all of you shall receive your pay then. You are dismissed for today. Hiruzen muttered while handing Kakashi four envelopes with a mission payment. Kakashi gave each of his genin one of them, leaving the fourth envelope to himself. That day, each member of Team 7 was 75,000 Ryo richer. Naruto looked back at the mission assignment desk for one more time. The mission assignment desk is located within a huge wide open space with six windows and high ceilings, with two stick-like lights. The ceiling also has the kanji for the word shinobi printed on it. There is a long table where the hokage and other ninja sit when distributing the missions. On the front of the desk, there is a white banner with the kanji that says mission assignment this way, and at the top is another banner that says everybody, do your best. Naruto exited the room with his team and walked towards training ground 3, where Kakashi would start their training for the day. It was mostly giving them intense tojutsu drills, and doing a lot of chakra control exercises, and also teaching them some battle formations if they were in a battle. They weren't complaining as they liked putting in the hard work. Naruto also drew resistant seals on Sakura's and Satsuki's legs. It was difficult for them as they needed to constantly channel chakra into their limbs to strengthen them enough to move through their exercises. 
Naruto explained that the idea of these seals were to slowly wean yourself off of using chakra in order to increase one's natural speed and strength. Kakashi also asked them about their chakra natures. Once he got the answers he needed, he simply hummed and nodded his head. Naruto also secretly created a group of shadow clones in a secluded location so that they could help boost his training. He would also have to tell his teammates about the shadow clone jutsu and the benefits it brings one day when they have enough chakra. For now, he just needed to focus on getting stronger so that he can accomplish his dreams. Two weeks later this repeated process went for two weeks as Team 7 broke record after record. They made a name for themselves in the shinobi community. They were now known as the Team Overwork because of their D-Rank mission's completion record. Naruto's chakra control was a lot better. He and his clones managed to float a leaf on each finger. After that he made them spin counterclockwise before switching direction. Fuinjutsu was still the skill he had taken the largest leap in ability. Naruto received advice from Kakashi about the tree walking exercise. Kakashi said that they had not actually mastered this technique until they could fight while standing on a vertical surface for at least an hour. So group sparring sessions with Kakashi as their opponent was an everyday thing. Right now, Kakashi was currently sitting against a rock while reading his adult novel, but he really wasn't focusing on it. He was thinking about Naruto, Satsuki and Sakura. I'd give them a couple of months before they reach high genin or low chunin in strength. They're monsters to say the least, able to handle things that most gen in their age could only dream of handling. And don't even talk about their mission record. Kakashi snorted, remembering about his conversation with Hiruzen a few hours ago. The amount I would allow them to do is 15. So 210 D rank missions in two weeks time. Let's not even count how many of those missions were about catching Tora, Madame Shijimi's cat. Kakashi mused. I think it's time we get something harder. They're way too overqualified for this now. Welcome back Team 7. What will it be today? I have painting the fence for Katara san walking the Inuzuka dogs, or we could know Tora. Came a scream from outside, signifying that the cat Team 7 just caught ran away again. Saratobi blinked before continuing. Of course there is always catching Tora again. Um, Lord Hokage. I don't think we'll be doing any of those today. Kakashi replied, making Hiruzen look at him curiously. I think it's time we take a C-rank mission. I believe they're ready to take on such a task. Kakashi explained. Hiruzen smiled and nodded. The three genin widened their eyes at hearing Kakashi's words. All right then. A C-rank mission it is. Hiruzen muttered. What kind of mission is it? Kakashi asked as Hiruzen took out a scroll and gave it to Kakashi. An escort and protection detail. You are to protect the client heading back to the land of waves. Saratobi replied. Kakashi thought about it a little more before nodding. Very well, I think we can accomplish a mission like this. You can send the client in now. After Hiruzen's order, Team 7 turned to look at the door. Almost as soon as it slid open the stench of alcohol slammed into everyone's noses. Sakura almost gagged as Naruto immediately cut off the chakra he had sent to his nose. Satsuki had a disgusted expression on her face. A middle-aged man named Tazuna walked in the room while holding a beer bottle. Tazuna is a gray-haired bespectacled man with a large beard and dark eyes. He wore a sleeveless v-neck shirt with an obi, pants, and a pair of sandals. He also carried a towel around his neck and wore a pointed hat on his head. What the hell? I don't want a bunch of snot-nosed brats protecting me. I want real ninjas damn it. Tazuna shouted in annoyance while pointing at the three genin. Before he could start insulting them, he felt a massive chill sent down his spine as Naruto, Sakura and Satsuki glared menacingly at him while releasing their killer intent. Say one word about us and you'll definitely believe we're real ninja. Naruto muttered at him. Tazuna took a step back with a fearful expression on his face. Kakashi sighed and patted the blonde's hair. Don't go threatening the client now, no matter how much of an asshole he is. Kakashi scolded in a bored tone. You you are right Tazuna stuttered a bit before clearing his throat. Anyways, I am the super expert bridge builder Tazuna. I expect you to provide me super protection until I get back to my country, the land of waves and complete the bridge. Tazuna requested somehow in his drunken stupor. Right then, why don't we all let Tazuna sober up a bit in Kanoha and meet at the east gate tomorrow at 8am. Kakashi suggested. 
No one argued with that, not even the drunk Tazuna. Naruto grinned at him. Sounds like a plan, sensei. I'm gonna prepare for tomorrow. Later the next day, yo. Bakashi greeted lazily as he appeared using the body flicker jutsu. Even with the body flicker jutsu you are still one second late, sensei. What do you have to say for yourself? Sakura asked him while putting her hands on her waist. Kakashi chuckled before giving an excuse. There was actually a herd of black cats on my doorstep, so I had to wait for them to leave, then walk around my house three times before taking the long way around. You know, to stave off the bad luck. Kakashi explained like it was a common thing for him. Naruto chuckled while Sakura giggled, Satsuki just sighed. Anyway, let's get going, Kakashi said, picking out his ear as he began to leave. The others soon followed him, however Kakashi stopped when they got several feet from the gate when he noticed they were missing one. Naruto. Kakashi asked as Naruto had turned around and was looking at the gate. Something wrong? He asked the blonde genin. I've never set foot out of the village before. Naruto muttered. Kakashi nodded, understanding what the blonde was feeling. He felt the same when he left the village for the first time, actually probably everyone felt the same when they left Konoha for the first time. Same here. Sakura whispered. Satsuki didn't say anything, but she was feeling the same thing like her two teammates were feeling. It was indescribable. Kakashi patted the three of their backs reassuringly. Well, you'll get used to it at some point. When you become Chunin of Jonin one day, leaving the village to perform missions is a common thing. Well, let's get going. Kakashi muttered as they started walking. Team 7 began moving through the countryside of the Land of Fire. Naruto in front, Sakura and Sasuke on the left and right respectively, and Kakashi taking up the rear. Naruto didn't know why, but he suddenly remembered the things Sakura taught him about the Land of Fire. The Land of Fire is one of the largest and most powerful countries seen, and is the home of the main characters of the series. Its government leader is the Fire Daimyo. The Land of Fire was the first country to adopt a ninja village, Kanahagakur, a custom other countries would soon adopt. The Land of Fire is appropriately oriented towards the element of fire, typically having very bright and warm weather. While not the physically largest country, it has the largest hidden village. The Land of Fire has been involved in wars with the Land of Lightning, the Land of Earth, and the Land of Wind. In the quiet years that followed, the Land of Fire slowly recovered and became accustomed to peace. This was seen as a weakness by other countries, which had been working to increase their military power. On the border between the Land of Fire and the Land of Sound sits the Valley of the End, a large rift formed shortly after the founding of Kanahagakur by the first Hokage and Madara Echeha. For a while Naruto looked around at the environment, taking in all the sights he could. However, as time wore on his excitement about being out of the village began to fade. True he was out of the village, but everything looked the same. All he saw were trees, trees and more trees, eventually the green simply lost its splendor. And it looks like his teammates felt the same way too. Naruto was about to start chatting with them until he felt a bit of killing intent directed towards him. He was used to the feeling, getting them from the Kanoha villagers every day. He tried finding where it was coming from, but it was no use, so Naruto was forced to rely on his eyes for the moment. As he continued walking he spotted a puddle in the middle of the road. The Kashi, Satsuki, Sakura eyed it too before moving on. Sakura widened her eyes as she looked at the puddle again. Wait. It's hot out here, so why is there a puddle this big that's supposed to be evaporated by now? Sakura wondered before shaking her head and moving on. Though she signaled Satsuki and Naruto to be on guard subtly. They walked past the puddle. Suddenly, the water from the shallow puddle rose up as two people jumped out of the puddle and leaped towards Kakashi. Sensei. Sakura shouted in shock as Kakashi was a pair of shuriken link chains. The two yanked the cables resulting in Kakashi getting torn to shreds, sending body parts and blood flying everywhere. What incarnation. Azuna shouted in shock, not knowing whether he was drunk or this was actually happening. Sakura immediately appeared in front of Tazuna with two kunai in her hands. Naruto and Satsuki also appeared in front of Tazuna. Naruto studied his opponents. One was named Gozu who is a rogue chunin of Kurigakur like his brother Maizu. Gozu had shoulder length while dark brown hair and dark eyes. 
He wears a rebreather that covers the lower half of his face, and a large clawed poisonous gauntlet on his right arm, which had a chain coming out of it, that had the other end attached to his brother's own gauntlet. He wore a camouflage suit with bandages around his waist, dark-colored, knee-length sandals and a ragged black cape. His Kurigakur forehead protector had a single horn on it. His twin brother Maizu had the same rank as him before defecting from Kiri. Maizu had shoulder length wild dark brown hair and dark eyes. He wears a rebreather that covers the lower half of his face, and a large clawed poisonous gauntlet on his left arm, which had a chain coming out of it that had the other end attached to his brother's own gauntlet. He wore a camouflage suit with bandages around his waist, dark colored, knee length sandals, and several pouches around his waist. His Kurigakur forehead protector had two horns on it. Together they were the Demon Brothers. Naruto quickly created five shadow clones to protect Izuna from the back. He and his teammates charged towards the Demon Brothers. Satsuki skillfully threw a shuriken and kunai into the chains, making them stick to a tree. She then ran up to the pair before jumping up in between them and performing the signature Ichiha clan split kick to their faces. Bomb. The Demon Brothers grunted from the powerful kick. They quickly recovered and released the chains before charging. Maizu attempted to stab Naruto with the poisonous gauntlet on his left arm. Naruto blocked the attack with his right hand. He them smirked at Maizu. Suddenly, Maizu was wrapped around in a chain by Sakura, who pulled him in with a powerful tug. Shanro she shouted before punching the man in the face with a chakra-enhanced punch. Her powerful blow knocked the man out, while denting his face mask in the process. Meanwhile, Satsuki expertly dodged a swipe from Gozu's poisonous gauntlet and performed a roundhouse kick to his face. Gozu staggered back a little before Naruto appeared in front of him via the body flicker jutsu and executed a combo of powerful punches to his face. Satsuki leaped over Naruto and stomped the dazed Gozu on the face, knocking him onto the ground. She then applied chakra to her right leg before stomping onto Gozu's face again, knocking him unconscious. Tie them up to that tree, Sakura. Satsuki muttered while patting the dust off her body. Sakura nodded and began doing what she was told. You can come out now, Kakashi-sensei. Naruto shouted as Kakashi walked out of the bush he was previously hiding in. Phew, thank the sage you used substitution. That blood and gore was far too real. Sakura whispered as Kakashi patted her head. Sorry for scaring you like that, Sakura. Good job for defeating those two, you three. That was some good reaction time. Kakashi gave Sakura, Naruto and Satsuki his signature eye smile. Thanks. Naruto replied with a grin on his face. Kakashi pointed at his right arm. You might want to get that checked out, Naruto. Kiri ninja have been known to poison their weapons. Kakashi pointed at the cut on the back of Naruto's right hand, the hand which was used to block Maizu's poisonous gauntlet. Naruto sighed before taking out a kunai and without any hesitance stabbed himself right in the wound to let the poison bleed out. Jeez. You could have just asked me to help, idiot. Sakura grumbled as Naruto grinned sheepishly at her. She's right, idiot. Now you might just die from blood loss. Satsuki commented. Naruto waved that off nonchalantly. No, I won't. It'll be healed in a second. Just watch. Whoa. Sakura widened her eyes in surprise as steam started rising out from inside Naruto's wound. What the hell? Satsuki whispered as she saw the wound close up on its own. Naruto was watching it with a small smile on his face. Hum Kakashi hummed while watching the scene from the side. It must be the power of the Kaiubi. Naruto is going to be receiving so many questions. The real question here is, are they really ready to hear about Naruto's burden? I know their friendship is deeper than blood, but there's always that slim chance of seeing Naruto as a monster. Kakashi mused before looking at Tazuna who was in a daze from what happened. Are they really just kids? Tazuna whispered to himself. What was that Naruto? Was it some kind of healing jutsu? Can you teach me that Sakura asked with stars in her eyes. Naruto smiled sadly at her. No, I'm sorry. It's not a jutsu, Sakura-chan. It's something I had since birth. Naruto explained, making Satsuki raise a brow and look at him curiously. Since birth. A keke genkai. Satsuki asked him. Naruto shook his head. No, not that. It's something else. I'll tell you guys about it later, believe it. For now, let's continue on with the mission. Naruto promised them. 
Sakura sighed in dissatisfaction because she didn't get her answers. Kakashi looked at the demon brothers who slowly came back to consciousness. They looked around before realizing they were tied up. Naruto grinned at them. Welcome back to the land of the living you two. Did you have a nice nap? Naruto asked them. Maizu glared at him. How did you know of our ambush? He asked Naruto who shrugged. Who me? I didn't know anything. I just reacted like a shinobi would. All I could sense was you two's killing intent, but I couldn't sense where it was coming from. Kakashi Sensei seemed to be onto you though. Naruto pointed at Kakashi. Tsutsuki looked at Tazuna who was pacing around nervously. He looked more nervous than usual. She would have to keep his strange behavior in mind. Meh, it wasn't that hard if you know what to look for. Since it hasn't rained in nearly a week, there was no way that a puddle could have lasted very long on a clear day, much less seven. Kakashi explained with a shrug. Wait a minute. The Zuna who was looking a bit disgruntled, glared at Kakashi. If you knew they were going to attack us. Why did you leave it to the kids? What kind of sick man are you? Tazuna asked, a bit disturbed by Kakashi's thought process. Kakashi shook his head. If I wanted I would have killed these two instantly, but there was something I needed to find out. I wanted to know who these two were after. Kakashi explained. WH what do you mean? Tazuna stuttered out his question. Kakashi looked at him. I wanted to know if they were attacking a shinobi, or if they were after you, the super expert bridge builder. Kakashi explained to him as his narrowed his visible eye. When you made your request to Konoha, you asked for standard protection, from bandits, highwaymen and the like. You never mentioned that ninja were after you. If we had known this, it would have been designated a beer rank mission or higher, for Chunin or Jonin. You lied to us, Tazuna. Tazuna looked down feeling ashamed under Kakashi's gaze. Kakashi continued speaking. Our mission was to simply get you to your destination and guard you while you build your bridge. If we had known we would have been fending off attacks from ninja, we would have staffed a different squad and charged for the cost of a beer rank mission. He then shook his head. Even if you had your reasons for doing it, lying about a mission is unacceptable. As it is, we are now operating outside of our duties. Kakashi decided. I ain't going nowhere, sensei. Naruto muttered, making Kakashi look at him in surprise. Naruto looked at him with a determined expression. I don't care if he lied about it. The fact is we already accepted it. We've already gone this far right. I'm not going back on my word, not only would that be disgracing ourselves and Kanoha, but it could also cause people to lose faith in our village if we run at the first sign of trouble. And I don't want to be known as a coward. Naruto declared, shocking Tazuna. Oi, you think you can protect him by yourself? Oh don't answer that, we all know you would be lost without me and Sakura watching your back. Satsuki said with a smirk on his face. Sakura nodded in agreement with Satsuki's words. So does that mean you guys are in? Naruto asked them. HN. Satsuki replied with a smirk on her face. MHM. Sakura nodded with a smile on her face. Kakashi looked between the three and sighed. I guess that means we're continuing, but be warned, the next enemy we run into won't be low-level Chunin like those two. It will probably be a Jonin like myself. Kakashi warned them, hoping this would change their minds. Unfortunately for him, they weren't deterred in the slightest. It was later in the day, and Team 7 along with Tazuna, had found a small clearing off the road to the land of waves to rest for the night. Kakashi had made his students split up and prepare the camp. Satsuki was tasked to find lumber and starting a campfire, while Sakura had been ordered to prepare the tents. Naruto and his shadow clones were the ones who had gotten them some food, catching fish from a nearby stream. After dinner, Kakashi looked at his students. Listen up kids, since this mission is now more dangerous than we thought, we are going to be taking two-hour watch shifts. Naruto, you're going first, Sasuke go second, Sakura will go third, and I will go last. How about this, Sensei? I can create shadow clones, so you three can have an extra hand helping you keep watch. Naruto suggested. Kakashi nodded after hearing him out. That's a great idea, Naruto. You can start now. The rest of you, make sure to get some sleep while you can. Kakashi advised as Naruto got up from the ground and went to perch himself on a large rock a little ways away, so he could start keeping watch. Kakashi began moving to his tent, while Sakura and Satsuki went into their shared tent. 
The tent was actually suited for having three people sleeping in it. Naruto crossed his index and middle fingers from both hands. Shadow Clone Jutsu. He whispered as ten clones puffed into existence only to scatter as soon as they were formed, moving off several dozen feet away in all directions, and transforming themselves into random rocks, leaves and small insects. Naruto closed his eyes as he sat down in a meditative pose. He began using a unique exercise he had learned in a book on chakra concepts and theories. The exercise was called Chakra Pulse. It was different from his chakra pulse, which was used to dispel Jinjutsu by flaring out a powerful pulse of chakra. You know what, I'll change the name of my chakra pulse. It will now be called Chakra Disruption. Naruto thought to himself. Chakra Disruption. Level 5 back to the main point, chakra pulse gives Naruto something akin to a 360 degree view, similar to the sonar pings, a bat used with sound waves, with a small pulse of his chakra in all directions. This had two purposes, the first was to allow Naruto to remain alert to everything around him, and the second was to use it as a basic chakra control exercise, by slowly lowering the amount of chakra used, while maintaining the amount of distance he could pulse his chakra. However, it wasn't quite as effective in the middle of a forest as it would be elsewhere, since the foliage reduced its efficiency, but that was what the clones were for. Can I help you old man? Naruto asked as Tazuna climbed onto the rock he was sitting on. His eyes were still closed, and he had not bothered to even look in Tazuna's direction as he remained perfectly still, something that had taken him and his shadow clones nearly two weeks to accomplish. Shouldn't you be in bed by now? An old goat like you needs their rest. Naruto pointed out with a smirk on his face. Hardy har har brat. Tazuna grumbled back as Naruto's smirk widened from his reaction. I was just wondering why did you agree to come with me knowing I had lied? Tazuna asked Naruto. Naruto stayed silent, making Tazuna unsure whether the blonde would answer or not. I won't abandon people in need. It is dishonorable and cowardly, sure we may be ninjas who assassinate people from behind, but we have morals too. Below courage there is nothing, that's what the third Hokage said to me one time. Naruto explained before opening his eyes and looked at Tazuna. Those are some words that I do my best to live by. The next day, everyone was getting ready to continue the journey to the land of waves. Kakashi looked at Tazuna. Before we go on Tazuna-san, I need you to provide some answers. Why are those two after you? And if you don't tell us I'll have to end the mission when we drop you ashore. Kakashi threatened. Tazuna sighed and looked down. Fine, I'll tell you, turns out a super powerful and dangerous man is after my life. Although short, he is a man with a very long and dangerous shadow. You've probably heard of the name before, the wealthy shipping magnate, Gato. Tazuna explained, Kakashi slightly widened his eyes. Gato, the founder of Gato Company. One of the world's few extremely wealthy people. That Gato. Tazuna nodded. Yes. Officially, he runs a shipping company and appears to be nothing more than a legitimate businessman. However, underneath that front, the man is one of the rulers of the criminal underworld. He is known for using gangs and hiring ninja to ruin countries and initiate hostile takeovers of other business. He uses his business as a cover for his black market operations, smuggling drugs, contraband even slaves, Tazuna whispered. Naruto crossed his arms and narrowed his eyes at hearing Tazuna's words. How can a person be this evil? All this for a couple thousand ryo. What did this world ever do to him? Naruto whispered to himself, while Tazuna continued giving them more information. He came to the land of waves a little over a year ago. Through money and violence, Gato quickly took control of the country's shipping industry. He now has a monopoly on all business traffic in the country. Tazuna continued. Sakura hummed and nodded. That makes sense. The land of waves is really nothing more than a string of violence. They have no other way to trade and receive supplies other than their shipping routes. By taking control over that Gato effectively controls everything. Sakura mumbled. No one questioned where she got that information from. The night before Team 7 had set out on their mission, she had gone over to the library and gotten a geography book, and had looked up any information he could on the land of waves. The Kashi had told her one of the times after their spars that it was important to gather any information he could before a mission began, because there was always a chance that the mission could go to shit. 
anything she learned about the mission, whether it was about the client, the climate both geographical and political, the terrain or any number of seemingly useless information, could prove to be the key that got her and her team out alive. The girl is right. Tazuna replied while nodding. On an island nation the man who controls the sea, controls everything from finance to government, to our very lives. Anyone who even attempts to stand up to him straight up disappears. However, even Gato has fears and the one thing he fears is the bridge. Tazuna added. Well, that explains why he's after you, Naruto mumbled. Once the bridge is complete it will connect the land of waves to the mainland, and you won't need ships to get supplies. Since you're the master bridge builder, you're in Gato's way and he wants to off you. Naruto added while performing a throat slicing motion. That means that this Gato is the one who hired those ninja. But Tazuna Satsuki narrowed her eyes at Tazuna. If you knew this was going to happen, knew that Gato was dangerous, why did you lie to us and most importantly the Hokage about the mission? Satsuki asked him. Tazuna sighed and palmed his face. Geez, you guys are more curious than cats. He grumbled before clearing his throat. Since Gato has come our country has been reduced to nearly nothing, even the feudal lord has no money. What they and the rest of us commoners have hangs in the balance of building the bridge. He sighed. We poor people are the ones who are paying for this mission, we simply don't have the money to afford a beer higher rank mission. They're just too expensive. He smiled at the team of Konoha Shinobi. If you drop me off and abandon me when we get ashore, there will be no bridge. Beto will no doubt kill me before I can even get home. A thick uncomfortable silence followed as the Shinobi digested everything Tazuna told them. Naruto grinned at him. You're pretty stupid, old man. And that's coming from someone like me. If you have tell the truth to Gramps, the Hokage, I'm sure he would have been able to arrange some kind of agreement to give you a team of Chunin or even Jonin, and set up some kind of payment plan. That's just the kind of guy he is. Tazuna looked down after hearing that from Naruto. Now that I said it, I think I can understand why you didn't say anything. You had no way of knowing whether or not we would have helped you if you had been honest. Naruto looked at the man with a fired up expression. As I said last night, I'm not abandoning you and the country, old man. That's the kind of guy I am and you better believe it Naruto declared. Satsuki smirked while Sakura grinned at Naruto's words. One thing they liked about Naruto was his kindness, kindness that this world desperately needs. Well, I suppose we can continue the mission. Kakashi said at last, but not before looking at the three genin. However, if at any point I feel we're out of our league and I order us to abandon the mission, you three will follow my orders to the letter. Are we clear? He asked in a commanding voice. The three genin nodded at their sensei's words. Thank you Tazuna smiled as he looked at the group. Two days later when Team 7 got to the coast it was to find a thick fog had rolled in. Tazuna had led them to a man who had been willing to offer them passage across, and now the six of them were inside a motorboat to cross the waters and head into the land of waves. Currently the motorboat was off however, and the boatman was rowing, so as not to attract attention from anyone that may want to cause their group harm. The fog's pretty thick. The only thing we can see is the way below us. Naruto commented. Sakura nodded. Yeah, which is why we should be even more cautious. She replied. The shinobi were on the lookout for ambushes, they did it in a way that was subtle as to not scare Tazuna, and the boatman giving them passage. We'll be able to see the bridge any minute now, as soon as you set foot on the other shore, you'll be in the land of waves. The boatman said quietly. As if on his words the fog parted where they were going to reveal the bridge. The group looked up as the shadow of it loomed over them. Even at the angle they were seeing it at, the large unfinished bridge was a sight for the group of Genin. Naruto whistled at the majestic sight. You're pretty good at this, old man. I didn't think a drunk old man like you was capable of building something like this. He commented, gaining Tazuna's glare. Thanks, Brad. Tazuna grumbled sarcastically, making Naruto snicker. The boat moved silently as they made their way closer to the land of waves. We're almost there everyone. Just under this archway and past the mangroves and we'll reach the pier. The boatman told them. Everyone snapped to attention as they made their way under a large archway, passing through it and coming out on the other side to a small inlet lake. The land of waves has many rivers running through it and is famous for its mangroves, which are filled with all kinds of life forms. There were several buildings around the bank and a few sparse trees located around and in the water. 
Team 7 noticed that the buildings were run down. Some of them even looked burned out, no doubt from Gato's thugs using violence to bring the population under Gato's heel. The boat made it to the dock, and the Kanohan Ninja plus one super expert bridge builder got off of it. After Tazuna and the boatman exchanged farewells the group set off again. For the most part it was silent, only the sound of footsteps could be heard. Naruto was taking point again, while Sakura and Satsuki were located on either side of Tazuna. Kakashi was taking up the rear, his adult novel safely stashed away in his pocket, due to the seriousness of the situation. Naruto narrowed his eyes as he heard something rustling and turned to look at a bush. He shook his head and continued moving, paying extra attention to his surroundings. As they continued, Naruto suddenly threw a kunai into a bush, startling Tazuna and gaining multiple curious gazes from his teammates and sensei. What's wrong Naruto? Sakura asked him. Naruto signaled her to be quiet as he walked towards the bush and moved the bush branches aside, only to find out that small white rabbit shaking like a leaf with a kunai right beside it. Poor rabbit, I'm so sorry about him. Sakura whispered before grabbing the rabbit and attempting to soothe its rattled nerves. Satsuki knelt down beside Sakura and started petting the white rabbit's soft head. Whoa she immediately found herself addicted to how fluffy the rabbit was. She secretly glared at Naruto who was conversing with Kakashi. Sensei, I could be wrong about this, but isn't a rabbit's fur supposed to be brown this time of year? We have the same type of hair in Konoha, and they have a brown coat this time of year. Naruto asked him. I should know, because I skinned them at least a hundred times when I was younger and had nowhere to stay. Naruto thought to himself, suddenly remembering the days when he went to the forest to hunt for food. Yes, you're right. A white rabbit at this time year means it was raised indoors, that could only mean that someone used it for a substitution. Bakashi whispered, Naruto narrowed his eyes. Their next enemy was hiding somewhere. Kakashi who had been using chakra to enhance their senses, heard a whoosh. Naruto who had enhanced senses due to him having the Kaiupi in him heard it too. They both widened their eyes at the same time, hearing the sound coming closer to them. Hit the dirt get down. Naruto pulled himself, Sakura and Satsuki down to the ground, while Kakashi pulled Tazuna onto the ground, while ducking the thing that flew over them. They saw a large broadsword flew towards a tree and stuck to it, half of the blade and was half inside the tree. Someone stood on the handle of the broadsword. The shinobi including a dazed Tazuna, stood up to face the person who had their back turned towards them. The person was a tall and noticeably muscular man with light grayish skin, short spiky black hair, dark brown eyes, and small eyebrows. He was normally seen wearing bandages like a mask over the bottom half of his face. Under his mask, he had a relatively narrow jawline and jagged teeth. He wore his forehead protector sideways on his head. He was seen shirtless, with his chest only covered by a belt to which he attached his kubikirabacho, wearing baggy pants with a striped pattern typical of karigakur and mimetic wrist warmers, extending up to his elbows, with matching leg warmers. Ain't I lucky, Kakashi Haddock in the flesh. The man said in rough-sounding voice. Well well, if it isn't Karigakur's missing nin Zabuza Mamachi, the demon of the hidden mist and his blade kubikirabacho, the sever's word. Kakashi commented while looking at Zabuza with a lazy expression. Zabuza Mamachi isn't he one of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist? Sakura whispered to herself while taking out a kunai from her pouch. Naruto widened his eyes. We're facing one of them, we're definitely outmatched. Don't know about Kakashi Sensei though. Naruto thought to himself, remembering the information about the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist. The Seven Ninja Swordsmen of the Mist was an organization consisting of only the greatest blade-wielding shinobi of their generation, that Karigakur can produce. There can only be seven members at a time hence the name. The swords of the Seven Swordsmen are passed down from generation to generation since the first Mizukage's era. They're considered mystical blades, and together, the Seven Swordsmen are capable of bringing down an entire nation, regarded as being the strongest shinobi in the village behind the Mizukage. Everybody behind me, this one's on a whole nother level. Kakashi warned before looking at Zabuza. I never would have expected someone like you to be working for scum like Gato. He commented. Zabuza shrugged. What can I say? It pays the bills. Besides it's all worth it if I get to fight an opponent like you. You know, when I was in Kiri, you were listed as an A-rank ninja with a kill on side order in our bingo book. 
Kakashi Haddock, the man who copied over a thousand jutsu. Zabuza pointed at Kakashi, specifically at his left eye which was being covered by his forehead protector. Wow, I know Kakashi Sensei is powerful, but 1000 jutsu. He must have one hell of a memory to be able to remember every single one of them. Sakura thought while looking at her sensei in a different light. Now that the pleasantries are over, why don't you hand him over, and I'll let you and your genin squad go. Zabuza suggested while pointing at Tazuna. Can't do that, sorry. It wouldn't look very good for Konoha if we just let you have him without even putting up a fight. Kakashi replied while glaring at him. Don't say I didn't try avoiding bloodshed, Haddock. Zabuza muttered before grabbing the hilt of his broadsword. He pulled the blade away from the tree and landed on the lake, standing on it before making a half-tiger seal and raising his other hand in the air. Let's see how you fare against this. Ninja art. Hidden mist jutsu. Using water from the surroundings, Zabuza created a thick mist that blanketed the already misted area so heavily that no one could see more than a few feet in front of them. Offensive formation U3 Kakashi shouted as Naruto, Satsuki and Sakura quickly surrounded Tazuna in a frontal triangle formation, with Naruto as the point, Satsuki on the left and Sakura on the right. Naruto quickly created three shadow clones to guard Tazuna from behind. Zabuza is a master of the silent killing technique. If you're not careful you'll be dead before you even know it. Protect the bridge builder and leave Zabuza to me, that's the teamwork here, Kakashi warned his three students before facing Zabuza. Kakashi put his hand on his forehead protector. It looks like I'm gonna need this. He whispered, before pulling up the headband, revealing a three Tomo Sharingan in his left eyes. Satsuki widened her eyes in disbelief. The Sharingan how does he have it? Only members of the Ichiha clan, my clan can possibly have it Satsuki glared at Kakashi, imagining the worst possible scenarios of how Kakashi got that Sharingan. One of them was that Kakashi stole it from a dead Ichiha when it was massacred. Ah. The Sharingan, it's an honor to be facing it so soon in the fight. Zabuza's voice came from within the mist, his outline form barely even visible. Zabuza narrowed his eyes at Kakashi as the mist began to thicken even more, making Zabuza disappear even faster. But we all know it's useless if you can't see. Were Zabuza's last words before fully disappearing in the mist. Damn. The effectiveness of the Sharingan is cut down with mist this thick. Kakashi cursed, deciding to make his chakra flow into his ears and nose, so that he can hear Zabuza's footsteps and smell Zabuza at the same time. Tazuna froze as he felt intense killing intent fill the air. Naruto narrowed his eyes and began to shake. He had never felt killing intent this unreal in his life. You three calm down. Remember what I taught you. I won't let any of my comrades die on me. Kakashi shouted at them as he noticed the trouble his genins were facing. The three took in a deep breath and began to push out their chakra to counter the effects of Zabuza's horrifying killing intent. That seemed to help as they calmed down a little. You guys are hopeless. Zabuza muttered as appeared right in the midst of the genin and Tazuna. Just as he was about to cleave the three genin in half with his broadsword, Kakashi appeared right next to Zabuza via the body flicker jutsu and stabbed him in the gut with his kunai, only for the Zabuza that he had stabbed turn into water. Water clone. Kakashi muttered as Zabuza appeared behind him and cleaved him in half, making the three genin freeze in horror. However, much to everyone's surprise, Kakashi turned into water as well. It's over. Kakashi muttered as he appeared behind Zabuza and brought a kunai to his throat. Zabuza chuckled and turned his head to look at Kakashi. This battle is far from over. Zabuza muttered before swinging his sword at Kakashi who was forced to duck under it. Zabuza stabbed his broadsword to the ground and used it as momentum to kick Kakashi in the face. Kakashi flew through the air and threw a bunch of caltrops at Zabuza, who was forced to stop himself from lunging at Kakashi who fell into the water. Caltrops. Come on Kakashi, are you even trying? Zabuza sneered under his mask. Kakashi broke through the surface of the water and gasped for some air, there's something wrong with this water, why is it so heavy ha? Huh? Now I've got you. Zabuza appeared right next to Kakashi, going through a set of hand seals. Water style. Water prison jutsu. Zabuza declared as Kakashi found himself trapped in a sphere of water that was drawn from its surroundings. He looked over at his students and began to order them. Run. Take Tazuna and go. He shouted. Oh they're not going anywhere. I'll take good care of them. 
Zabuza grinned under his mask as he created a water clone to deal with the Genin. In order to maintain the prison, users must stay in contact with the sphere, typically by keeping an arm submerged within it. You guys remember the plan. Naruto asked his teammates who nodded back at him. Kakashi widened his eyes hearing Naruto's words. What are you doing Naruto? Take Tazuna and run away. Kakashi shouted at them. Naruto smirked. Sorry sensei, can't do that. If abandon you, I'm worse than scum. Naruto replied before throwing something at Satsuki. Demon Wind Shuriken. Windmill of Shadows. Satsuki whispered as she unfolded the weapon Naruto gave her. At the same time, Naruto created two shadow clones that appeared behind Sakura. Fuma Shuriken are large four-bladed projectile weapons possessing preeminent sharpness and lethality. This type of shuriken is considered characteristic to the famous Fuma clan, after whom they were named and who possibly developed them. However, their use is not limited to this clan. The most commonly used ones can be collapsed for easy storage, leading to its nickname Shadow Windmill. Satsuki molded Chakra to her legs and leaped over Zabuza's water clone. A shuriken won't work against me. The water clone commented as Satsuki threw the large shuriken. The shuriken spun dangerously at Zabuza. Zabuza's water clone anticipated the attack, intending to block it, but Satsuki wasn't aiming for it. She was aiming for the real Zabuza who laughed a little. It's not enough. Zabuza shouted before grabbing the giant hull of the Fuma Shuriken. Suddenly, another Fuma Shuriken appeared from the shadow of the one Zabuza grabbed. Shadow Shuriken Jutsu. Akashi whispered watching the ongoing fight from his water prison. But still not enough. Zabuza shouted as he jumped over the shuriken that was aimed towards his chest. Heh. Satsuki smirked a little as the shuriken Zabuza jumped over was suddenly engulfed in white smoke, revealing that it was Naruto who had transformed into the shuriken. Naruto Shadow Clone, who was holding the three-pronged kunai in his hand, threw it at Zabuza, intending to stab it into Zabuza's hand that was maintaining the water prison. Zabuza seeing the dangers his attack has, pulled his hand away from the water prison, dispelling it. But it's not over yet. The three-pronged kunai was suddenly engulfed in smoke, revealing that it was just a transformation. The real Naruto who was holding the real three-pronged kunai, stabbed it into the left side of Zabuza's chest before pulling it out, letting blood splash everywhere. PSSH. Cherry Blossom Impact Shanro Sakura shouted as she was threw towards Zabuza by the two clones Naruto created. By him. Ugh. Zabuza grunted as he was punched in the face by Sakura's Cherry Blossom Impact attack before flying away. Naruto and Sakura were grabbed by Satsuki who pulled them onto the ground before they could fall into the water. Naruto grinned as he sat up and looked at Zabuza who just splashed into the water. What did you say again, no eyebrows. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.